need for words. You're safe, and that's all that matters. I brought Gallagher here. It's time to face the truth. Huh. The atmosphere sure is livened up with all these people in here. Well, I did my job. I gathered everyone here. Gallagher will explain the rest to you. Take care. I promised to give the siblings some privacy, so let's talk about our business first. What do you say? That sounds sensible enough. Since you went through the trouble of gathering the family head, the crew, and the Stellaron hunters, I'm guessing you have something important to say, Mr. Gallagher? Oh? Is it that obvious? The look on your face is practically screaming, I'm the one behind all this. <laughs> You're right, Mr. Yang. It is indeed time to come clean on everything. The siblings already know what they need to, and they've made their choice. But you, Nameless, arrived a bit late. So it's only fair that I answer your questions. Before we begin, let me reintroduce myself. I'm the founder of Dreamflux Reef, the deputy of the Watchmaker, and the one who sent out that invitation. As Gallagher, the history fictionologist, I humbly extend my greetings to you all. History fictionologist? So what, everything you told us was made up? Well, don't worry. Almost everything I shared was true. Well, except for the part about the family accepting me back. I double-checked with Micah, and everything he said about the family, the Watchmaker, and Mikhail is true. Thank you for your understanding. Now let's get down to business. I'm sure you're all wondering why I went through the trouble of setting up this battle for the legacy. Inviting different factions and stirring up a ruckus all over Penacone. Well, it all boils down to something very familiar to all of you. The Stellaron. The Stellaron? But how is that possible? Penacone is a free-flowing interstellar hub. There are no signs of contamination whatsoever. You're totally correct. So, care to take a guess at what that means? I wish that were the truth. But if that were the case, I wouldn't have invited all of you. The sweet dream doesn't come out of thin air. If you think of the memory zone as the sea, creating the land of the dreams is like filling that wild ocean with earth to make an island. To achieve this feat, without the help of an emanator of remembrance or enigmata, the only way is to use a Stellaron. And that's not something you can achieve with a simple wish. It requires vast quantities of knowledge, time, and manpower. I'm sure you get what I'm hinting at. In Asdana, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster. Uh, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster? It all started a long time ago, back when the Watchmaker and his crew liberated the Frontier Prison. They faced countless challenges as they began building Penacone from the ground up. That's when the idea of using the Stellaron came into play. The Stellaron first entered the Asdana system during the war. The Nameless warned everyone against the folly of attempting to tamper with such a power, and most heeded their words. But there are always people in the shadows with ulterior motives. The turning point came after Tiernan's death. With two of the Nameless gone, the Watchmaker had to go to the front lines. It was at that moment his rivals saw an opportunity. By the time a representative from the Montour system's family arrived at the Watchmaker's call, the Stellaron had already been activated and was seeping into the primordial synesthesia dreamscape. And I suppose the family happened to possess the knowledge to seal the Stellaron? Not just that. They knew far more about the Stellaron than the average person. They helped Mikhail swiftly quell the civil unrest and played a part in building Penacone under the disguise of the Harmony. Those three eras were known as the Age of Dreaming. 
the watchmaker, who had been left in the dark, sent out invitations across the universe, spreading the hype around the land of the dreams. Then, how did they turn against each other? Remember the island in the ocean metaphor? The truth is, the Stellaron was never truly sealed. It existed in a different form within the dreamscape. Think about this. What would it cost to create and maintain such a lavish dreamland? It's people's lives. The opulent dream is built upon the decay of spirits, with a toxic elixir called pleasure flowing through the dreamscape. It tempts people to indulge in the dreamscape, and gradually their minds succumb, becoming nourishment for the sweet dream. Confusion, laziness, and cowardice. Weaknesses that plague humanity were magnified and nourished by the family. Panacone became a new kind of prison, even more impenetrable than the previous one. Sadly, we realized this far too late. By then, the family had a firm grip on Panacone, swiftly quelling any opposition that arose. At my wit's end, I had to use the power of the Enigmata and sought refuge in this chaotic realm. Over the years, I created a meme within this dream for our use. Dormancy. That's its real name. We exploited a loophole. You see, regular people can't fall asleep again while they are inside the dreamscape. So this is the true meaning of the impossible. You sent out invitations in the Watchmaker's name to find forces capable of resolving the Stellaron disaster and draw them into Peniconi to uncover the truth. It's not just that. Above all, I wanted to see what happens when the major factions engage in a struggle for the legacy. Since this is the Watchmaker's first announcement in decades, the traitor within the family is bound to reveal themselves. So, the legacy is just a facade. Hmm. <laughs> if you want to consider the Stellaron as the legacy, I'm totally fine with that. If that's the case, where is the Stellaron now? That's a question for Mr. Wings. The Stellaron is still under the family's control, and as the head of the Oak family, I'm sure he holds all the answers. Go ahead. I'm sure Mr. Wings holds all the answers. Are you done talking? So, will you tell us where the Stellaron is? <laughs> it is the Panacone Grand Theater itself. As I suspected, it's the embodiment of the family. The edifice that first materialized within the Sweet Dream. That's what turned Panacone into its current state. As for the person who employed its power, it is in fact Mr. Gopherwood, the current Dream Master. Well, that was easier than I thought. Did you conduct your own investigation already? Correct. When I was trying to track down the person who murdered my sister, apart from you, Gopherwood was my second suspect. Hmm. Confronting me first turned out to be a smart move on your part. I didn't have other options. The Dream Master has been elusive, and even the heads of the families can hardly get an audience with him. Moreover, Mr. Gopherwood has been kind to my sister and me. And I didn't want it all to end like this. What do you mean by that? To be honest, my brother and I are also victims of the cancer of all worlds. We grew up as orphans, and were adopted by the family when they came to help. Mr. Gopher Wood recognized our potential and brought us to Penacony. But I can't just stand by and watch Mr. Gopher Wood become an enemy of the Harmony. I won't use my voice to support an evil cause. I won't step on that stage and sing, no matter who the traitor is or what orders they give me. I won't let the Charmony Festival become an event that destroys Harmony itself, or the paradise in our dreams. Indeed, for the paradise in our dreams. As the head of the Oak family, I'm responsible for ensuring Panacone's promising future. Robin and I will head into the sweet dream and confront the Dream Master. 
And if it turns out that the family has truly strayed from the Harmony, I'll fight alongside you. We'll put the Charmony Festival on hold and make sure Mr. Gopherwood pays for his blood debt. The enemies you are about to face aren't like this old dog here who can barely even bark. Since our interests are aligned, why don't we team up? Maybe, just maybe, we'll have a shot at success. We have always been following in the footsteps of our nameless predecessors. And there's no reason to stop now. <laughs> yeah, we nameless won't back down from a challenge. Isn't that right, Mr. Trailblazer? Uh, that line actually makes me a bit nervous. Rest assured, sitting on the sidelines isn't in our nature. Mr. Sunday, Miss Robin, I'm willing to accompany you on behalf of the Astral Express. Having a third party present should help with negotiations. And could make all the difference if things get ugly. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Thank you all very much. The Charmony Festival is about to start, and time is against us. We must hasten. Everyone, let's gather over here. We still need to make some preparations. I may have been quick to step up to the plate, but confronting the Dream Master could be a very dangerous affair. Uh-huh. Even you're saying that, Mr. Yang? Uh, how powerful is that Dream Master? He's the leader of the families of Pentagoni, and he has the entire power of the Harmony behind him. Not to mention the Stellaron in his possession. We must proceed with great caution. Maybe you can just stay behind this time, Mr. Yang? No, that won't do. Even if we count Robin as an ally, something felt off about Mr. Sunday just now. Although, I can't quite put my finger on it. I have to make sure he won't turn against us when things start to get dicey. You're still carrying the keepsake the IPC envoy gave you, right? May I borrow it for a moment? Huh. I knew it. As I suspected, this chip Venturine gave to you is actually a miniature transmitter. If I'm right, he intends to use it to track your location or contact you when needed. As it so happens, this may actually be of some use in the current situation. A Venturine? Is he still alive? And what does he have to do with our mission to confront the Dream Master? Remember what I said earlier? Working with the IPC is a way to keep the family in check. If negotiations go south and the family show their true colors by going after the Stellaron, I'll use this transmitter to send a message to the IPC. It'll be just the opportunity the IPC ambassador was hoping for. The only question mark in all of this is Venturine's current status. But the IPC is always listening, especially senior strategic investment department heads like him. Getting the message across shouldn't be a problem. Good luck to you, Welt. Well, you take care too. If anything goes wrong, don't worry about me. Just make sure to seal the Stellaron. Spoken like a true hero. Even if the Dream Master is innocent, the family's corruption runs deep. I won't make the same mistake Mikhail did. Let's wish him the best of luck. Don't you have something else to tell us, Gallagher? Why would you say so? Before we departed, the Conductor asked us to inquire about the three nameless in Penacony. We've already collected intel about Rosalina and Tiernan, so the only one left is Lightwork. If I'm not mistaken, we've already met him somewhere, haven't we? Hmm. It's not enough to say meet. But the answer is pretty obvious. After all, I've hinted at it in quite an evident way. I've been watching over you ever since I received the reply from the Astral Express. And I've seen the great effort you all put into linking different realms together across the cosmos. And now, after getting this far all in one piece, you have truly proven yourselves. Miss Himiko, were you the one who repaired the Express and got it sailing through the cosmos again? Yes. 
And you two, young Nameless. You have very interesting life stories and extraordinary skills. Uh, I don't know much about my life story, but I do have extraordinary skills. <laughs> You're full of energy. Please send my regards to the conductor, Pom Pom. Please let them know that their friend had fond memories from his time aboard the Express, which he reminisce on every time he had a good drink. As for the last Nameless, he embarked, disembarked, and embarked again, traveling in a great circle, ending up back where he started. On his deathbed, he told me to find the Astral Express and deliver an invitation to the future Nameless. He left behind a special gift, a true legacy. Something that belongs only to the successors of the Trailblaze. Come with me. Now is the time to reveal it. Uh, back here again. Sometimes I feel like you're still alive, old friend. Like you've still got so much to say and do. I've kept my promise, brought the future trailblazers you've waited so long for. I don't know why you were so obsessed with that train, but I remember your last words. Don't let us down, old man. His resting place lies in the garden up ahead. The first and last nameless of Penacony, Mikhail Char Legward, the watchmaker. Watchmaker is the third nameless. Even I could guess that one. The legacy he left behind was a dream bubble. I believe inside that bubble, there's something that holds meaning only for the nameless. After all, when I checked its contents, I found nothing inside. Maybe some trailblaze runes? Even more mysterious than me. Well, let's have a look. as I suspected. That old man always had this strange belief in the Nameless and the Trailblaze, and I never understood where he got that confidence from. Especially since he never managed to get in touch with the Express while he was alive. I 
could never figure out what was going on in that old man's head. But this empty dream bubble is so typical of him. He was always full of weird fantasies and incomprehensible romanticism. <laughs> that mischievous old man. Well, I didn't expect him to leave anything concrete behind anyway. Don't think that's the case, Gallagher. I'm sure Mikhail has left us the most precious thing of all. <laughs> Don't start getting all philosophical on me, all right? Just as Mikhail believes in the nameless of the future, we unconditionally believe in the nameless of the past. How could they leave with regrets for the future when they were ready to dedicate their lives to the land they loved? There must be something contained in this dream bubble. It's just we haven't figured it out yet. You also have faith in the Watchmaker, don't you, Gallagher? Well, I'm a follower of the Enigmata. My philosophy forbids me to have faith in anything. That's why I understand what faith means in the path of Trailblaze. And I also want to know what he left behind. <laughs> I'll leave it to you guys then. Hmm. Can I borrow your pet? I need to make a trip back to Golden Hour and check something at the Dreamscape sales store. It's for Mikhail, and for the future of Penacony. Welcome to the Reverie Hotel! How may I help you? Greetings. We're the Nameless from the Astral Express, and we'd like to check in. The Astral Express? But I thought... Yes, my companions already checked in. My name is Dan Hung, and I believe my personal information is recorded in your system. I see, but your companion said you wouldn't be coming due to a change of plans. <laughs> now the plans have changed again. And you are... Me? Uh, I'm... Pong Pong. A uh, new Nameless, who's also with the Astral Express. <clears throat> He's my fellow trailblazer. Uh, we responded to the family's invitation before he boarded the Express, so he wasn't registered in your system. <clears throat> Is it possible to accommodate him as well? Oh, I see. Another one of the Nameless had a similar situation. Seems like a lot of people are joining the Trailblaze these days. Since there's a precedent, it shouldn't be a problem. Just give me a second to contact your companions. I'm sorry, dear guests, but it seems I'm unable to reach the other members of the Astral Express. What do you mean by unable to reach them? My apologies. This is the first time I've encountered a situation like this. However, the system indicates that those guests are still in the dreamscape. How about this? Give me their room number. We'll go check on them ourselves. I'm afraid that's not possible. I need to verify both of your identities before I can share any guest information. How about you just wake up someone? Let's say, uh... Wilt? I'm sorry, but there are strict rules regarding Forced Awakening. It cannot be done without the proper clearance. So nothing works, huh? What's your solution then? Are you saying we sleep here? At the reception? Please be patient. We need to contact your companions in order to confirm your identities. And now it seems you need to confirm our identities before you can contact our companions. <sighs> it seems so. Oh, fudge! Look, nothing personal, but if you can't handle this, go find someone else who can, okay? Calm down, dear guests. I do recall that Mr. Sunday, the Oak family head, personally handled this issue earlier. Oh, please wait a moment while I contact him. I don't think she's trying to give us a hard time. She really just doesn't know what to do. Uh, I have a bad feeling about this. You tried to contact them on the Express earlier, but they didn't respond. <sighs> Something doesn't seem right. I need to leave for a moment. You can stay here with the receptionist. Sure thing. 
Just don't keep me waiting forever. <sighs> Don Hung seems pretty worried about his companions. I should give him some space. Stressing out about it won't help anything. here for the Charmony Festival, too. Well, I didn't come all the way here specially for the festival. Honestly, I don't really even know what it's about, but I heard it's a lot of fun! Well, back in my home world, Anaria, we have festivals like that all the time. My dad threw me a birthday party one time that was just as extravagant as the Charmony Festival. Oh, come on! The Charmony Festival is a once-in-an-amber-era event! How can a birthday party compare? Well, you never know, right? Maybe on her world, birthdays only happen once in Amber Era. Anyway, let's forget about that. Have you heard about the, uh, unsettling things happening in the dreamscape? Unsettling things? What could possibly go wrong? It better not ruin the Charmony Festival! I've been looking forward to it! Relax. With a big event like this, there's bound to be lots of gossip and rumors. Don't worry. If anything does happen, the family will be on top of it. <sighs> oh, that's a relief. I didn't come all this way to see the festival go down the drain. Well, looks like I won't get any fudging clues out of these two. They're clueless. Fuck a face for Greetings. I'm Cody of the Bloodhound family, head of security for the hotel. How may I assist you? Hello. So, uh, there's something I wanted to ask about. I've been hearing some unsettling rumors about certain incidents that might affect the Charmony Festival. Do you think there's anything to be worried about? I've traveled all the way from the Hayai Federation and I don't want my trip to be ruined. Um, what do you mean? Wait, you haven't heard? I'm not sure where you heard those rumors, but they're completely baseless. I can assure you, as a representative of the Bloodhound family, that everything is going smoothly for the Charmony Festival. At present, all of the families are focused on making sure the festival starts on time. Even the Dream Master himself has arrived. So don't worry, your trip won't be in vain. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a relief to hear. She doesn't appear to be acting. So... It seems that even the hotel staff are out of the loop. Back already? Hasn't she returned yet? Nope. I'm starting to wonder if sending her to contact Sunday was a good idea. Neither the staff nor the guests seem to know anything about what's happening in the dreamscape. And wherever we go, all we see is people enjoying themselves. Definitely not a good sign. I agree. Another unusual thing is that the Oak family is supposed to be in charge of organizing the council and managing everything inside and outside the dreamscape. However, I walked around the hotel but didn't meet a single member of the Oak family on such an important day. Well, I'll be forked. If I remember correctly, the head of the Oak family is that Sunday guy. Right? We shouldn't linger here too long. Let's go back to the Express for now. Uh, not so fast. Have you ever robbed the IPC, bro? If you run away now, everyone will be chasing after you. Are you suggesting we sit here and do nothing? I wouldn't say do nothing. But let's stay put for now. Even if the family has ulterior motives, they couldn't have anticipated us showing up here. We're the surprise factor for them. 
They don't want to attract unwanted attention from certain outsiders, so they won't do anything reckless. See? The IPC lackeys are keeping a close eye on this hotel. If I were a family member, I'd find an official excuse and keep the surprise factors here. If we just wait here, that would be like walking into their trap. Of course, we don't need to walk into their trap. I gave a backup plan to the memo keeper. If it turns out we won't be allowed to enter the dreamscape, she'll order a drink for me in the VIP lounge at the hotel. In reality... A secret signal. That's right. Oh, a concrete object can indeed help the memo keeper establish a connection with you. But Boot Hill, if you have more backup plans in the future, I hope you'll let me know in advance. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's one of my quirks. I have too many unreliable friends. And if I reveal that I have backup plans, things can... things can go awry. And that would leave all backup plans completely useless. How do we get into the VIP lounge? This is where my street smarts come into play. You can actually book a stay on credit and be interested. You're the lobby manager, right? Yes, I am. How may I assist you? We're the Nameless from the Astral Express. We wanted to check in, but there's something wrong with your system. The lady at the front desk said she would contact the manager, but now she's nowhere to be found. Now, we've been waiting here forever without any food or water. What the fork, man? Is this how the family treats its guests? Is this your idea of street smarts? Starting an altercation? It's called standing up for your rights. I apologize for the inconvenience. Please wait while we try to contact Mr. Sunday. I'll arrange two premium seats in the VIP lounge so you can rest there while you wait. <laughs> See? Just like that. Just... Uh, just... Don't call yourself nameless next time. Wow, this bar is something else. Certainly worthy of the planet of festivities. Uh, one peak soul glad, shaken, not stirred. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey, I have an order for a bottle of his Donna's White Oak. Can you help us find it? Has Donna's White Oak? Hmm. I think there might be a misunderstanding. We don't serve that here. Oh, no way. Are you sure you're not mistaken? If someone had reserved such a beverage, I would definitely remember it. It sells for hundreds of thousands of credits per bottle, after all. Uh, I couldn't afford to cover for such an item if it were broken or lost. That's strange. Well, could it be that the memo keeper couldn't afford it? Then what should we do now? Oh, no need to rush. Well, let's grab some drinks first. Maybe I arrived too early and she hasn't come yet. Now, let's see what kind of juice malts you all have here. Huh. Well... Give me a glass of Heenum Valley, 40 years. I'll have it neat. No ice. Well, that's the most expensive one on the list. You have a taste for the finer things. <laughs> it's on the house, anyway. What can I get for you? Anything you recommend is fine. Then I would recommend today's special, Glass Village. It's classic Soul Glad mixed with Laboom juice. It's refreshing and suits your cool demeanor. Hmm, just one minute. Ah, this flavor! Dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel. Ooh, it really hits the spot. Truly the finest sherry cask aged malt juice in the cosmos. 
dynamite barbecue with rocket fuel, Earth. Is that really something that humans enjoy? <laughs> hey, this guy doesn't know anything at all. As long as you're satisfied, dear guests, please enjoy. Let's give the memo keeper another half system hour. If she doesn't show up, we'll need to come up with a new plan. In the meantime, let's take stock of the situation. What do you think? The situation is unclear. Something must have happened on the planet of festivities, but the public is unaware of it. Someone in a position of power within the family must be covering it up. It's unusual for the followers of the Harmony to invite other factions, let alone the IPC and the Masked Fools. <sighs> if what you said about the Emanator of the Nihility is true, the situation in Penacony is a little complicated, to say the least. Actually, there's something else I'm concerned about regarding Acheron. As you know, the faction that follows the path of the hunt are some of the most dangerous folks in the cosmos to mess with. <clears throat> Who in the right mind would impersonate the Sienjo Alliance or the Galaxy Rangers? It's like asking for a death wish. Isn't there a saying among the Sienjo people that uh, the Rainbow Set lets their luck's arrow do all the beating? Talking. Do all the talking. Well, you know what I mean. Even though the Galaxy Rangers have been out of sight for years, we've been keeping an eye on this region. Even the dumbest criminals know better than to mess with the Annihilation Gang, much less the Rangers. But that Acheron lady, she doesn't seem like a lunatic at all. On the contrary, she's highly logical and organized. She knows exactly when to hold back and when to strike without mercy. And you believe that someone like her would have an ulterior motive for impersonating a Galaxy Ranger? <sighs> I'm not entirely sure, but I do have my suspicions. Maybe she knows a Galaxy Ranger, or perhaps she's trying to lure us out for some reason, which I can't figure out. Anyway. What worries me more are the anomalies within the family. They've summoned followers from various paths for the festival. No matter how generous such a gesture is, this move seems highly unusual, unless the invitations weren't sent by them. Uh, if that's the case, it's even more intriguing that the family insists on organizing the Charmony Festival, despite the chaos. Maybe. She pay the harmony pull the strings. You find it beyond human understanding because it wasn't arranged by humans at all. People do stupid things out of irrational impulses. They abandon their principles when self-interest is involved. They believe in things they know they shouldn't and fudge. They even break their own rules. But eons don't. They stick to their determined path and never turn back, even if they reach a dead end. You think Shipei's will is behind all this? It may not necessarily be Shipei, but there's definitely some higher entity involved. I know it may sound pessimistic, but if human free will were reliable, why would we even need Galaxy Rangers? It's much simpler when you boil it down to the eons and paths. Like how Lon always follows the path of the hunt, or how the Express stays true to the Trailblaze despite Akavili's disappearance. But in my opinion, Akavili's fall holds significance for the Nameless. Oh, so you're saying the Nameless now have to take responsibility for their own choices because their absolutely right leader is gone? Exactly. I believe the purpose of the journey isn't just about following a path that's always considered absolutely right. It's more about doing your best to choose the right path for yourself among countless possibilities, even with limited insight and judgment. I don't know what you've been through, but I agree that people must take responsibility for their choices, because no one else can do it for them. 
That's why the Galaxy Rangers need to uncover the imposter and figure out her true intentions. Just in case. I have a backup plan if the Memo Keeper doesn't show up. This is my final backup plan. I promise. You sure have a lot of cards up your sleeve. Well, going back to my old career would make things a lot easier. By the way, when you were walking around the hotel, did you happen to see any important looking guests? What's your plan? Oh, it's simple. We just grab some hostages and use them as bargaining chips with the family. Or maybe we can even take their identities. No need for that. We'll return to the Express now. Wait. Are you getting scared? <laughs> Draw your weapon. Let's make a big scene. Are you leaving, esteemed guests? Uh, would you like to cancel that as Donna's White Oak you just ordered? <clears throat> huh? As Donna's White Oak? But didn't you just say... Ha <laughs> ha. Looks like you are a bit intoxicated, esteemed guests. Uh, you ordered a bottle of As Donna's White Oak just a moment ago. Hmm. Looks like your memo keeper friend has finally arrived. <sighs> oh, right. Sorry, my memory's not the best. You know, too many modifications and all. <clears throat> anyway, let me check. <laughs> well, fork me. It says Donna's White Oak, all right. And there's a note. I'll be waiting for you on the Astral Express. No mistake, that's her message to you. She knew the hotel wasn't safe, so she suggested we find another place. Well, looks like we took a detour, but now it's back to the Astral Express. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Guests just boarded saying they were looking for Boot Hill, so I told them to wait in the parlor car. Oh, just in time. Two guests? Yeah, her too. Look, we welcome all passengers on the Astral Express, but sneaking in like that, you have no regard for etiquette. My apologies, Conductor. It was an oversight on my part. I assumed you were already acquainted with the Garden. Given the chaotic situation in Panacone, the Nameless are the only ones we can truly trust right now. You are the Memo Keeper. Pleased to meet you, Don Hung. I've seen you and others' memories. And as for Boot Hill, this is our first face-to-face -face meeting. I hope you enjoyed that bottle of Astana's White Oak. You sure have a refined taste. Finally, Memo Keeper. Well, let's cut to the chase. Spill everything you know. That's precisely what I intend to do. But before that, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Black Swan, and I serve the Garden of Recollection as a Memo Keeper. As for Acheron's story, I'm sure she knows it better than I do. Greetings. I'm Acheron. What? You Garden of Recollection shirtbag! You betrayed me! I apologize, but she did that at my request. Due to certain reasons, I have been exiled by the family. Thankfully, this memo keeper came to my aid and helped me escape their surveillance unnoticed. To be honest, it was more like stalking than helping. And the process was far from unnoticed. But we did escape. I asked her to guide me to a place beyond the family's reach and to contact a few trustworthy individuals, namely all of you. Trustworthy? <laughs> Son of a nice lady, you think I'm dumb or something? How about this? I'll put a few bullet holes in your head and see what secrets spill out. Then, we can talk about trust. It doesn't have to be like that. 
I'm willing to answer all your questions, but not right now. If my cover hadn't been blown, we might have had more time, but at the moment, we don't have any other options. No other options? What do you mean? This is the only way I can ensure everyone's safety. I kindly request an immediate warp jump out of the Astana star system. <sighs> this passenger is requesting... As far as I can tell, she's not a threat and seems to be telling the truth. I've briefly traveled with your companions and know their whereabouts, Don Hung. Please rest assured, your nameless companions are safe, but they need our help. As for Boot Hill, you may have guessed. I've been waiting for you. Galaxy Rangers are known for their elusive nature and limited contact with each other. So this was the only way I could reach out to you. Only by doing this can I find a true Galaxy Ranger and fulfill a long-standing promise. To return his relics to their rightful owner. Someone once told me that every rainfall is like a gift from the heavens, a sign of their mercy upon the world. Raindrops are said to be the tears of the gods, shed in response to the sorrows of the world. Their constant pouring is a reminder that the gods haven't abandoned us yet. So, how long has this rain been going on for? I used to believe just like you, that it would eventually stop years and decades past. And in the end, such hope faded away before the rain did. Looks like the god you mentioned doesn't exist after all. Well, let me share a story with the mortals who walk the paths are like sailors on a vast ocean, leaving behind a trail that creates countless ripples of possibilities. These ripples last longer than the fleeting lifetimes of humans. And for some, their presence leaves such a strong mark that it's reflected in the waves. Like those shadows on the ocean. Sin thirsters, the obsessions of the path striders, they emerge from the depths of IX seeing themselves as masters of their own destiny, unknowingly repeating the actions of their past lives. They emerge from the nihility and head toward it, leading purposeless lives. However, these hollow phantoms, they were once my dear companions, group of galaxy rangers. Are you watching over them? Watching over them? No. I'm guiding them toward transcendence. It was a brutal war. A crusade that shook the universe. The universe witnessed the fall of Zulo, the Lord Ravager, but it came at a price. A price so hefty that only those who were there still remember. The unwavering determination of the hunt followers persists even in death. So someone must guide these lost souls to their life beyond. They were heroes in their time. And they shouldn't be reduced to mere puppets of nihility. 
is for me. I've suffered too many losses on that battlefield to advance any further. And that makes me the most fitting person to carry out this task. But you know, these sin thirsters, they're not who they used to be. Does this seem pointless to you? Well, some tasks have to be done even if they are pointless. I can help you. For what? For the meaning of the nihility. That's what I've been seeking. I see. After all, this realm is off limits to ordinary souls, right? Thank you, stranger. I wish that you find what you seek. Before we part ways, I have one more question. It is true that their actions and even their entire lives may seem pointless from our perspective. But if, and it's just an if, if this is what the departed ones expected, should we try to change it? A good question. And a profound one. I don't know the answer. What I do know is that one day, I too will pass away. And when I bid farewell to this world, someone will stand at my grave and place a bouquet of flowers on it. When I appeared as a child, my speech, mindset, and soul reflected immaturity and innocence. As I grew into adulthood, I left behind my childlike side. I humbly request your blessings, esteemed advocate of Shibe. Come to me, my kinship. I have sought their presence with us. As you wish. I have faithfully served the Alfalfa family for nearly a decade, promoting the path of the harmony to the best of my ability. However, I made a mistake yesterday. While I was preparing dinner for the family head, I accidentally dropped a prepared dish on the floor. Out of laziness, I lied and claimed that everything was ready. Although the head has dismissed me as punishment, it has been tough to sleep with the guilt still gnawing at me, as I worry that the seeds of evilness may have taken root in my soul. So, I confess to you now to seek atonement for my sins. Do you sincerely repent and vow to change your ways? <sighs> yes. Have you examined your soul? And confessed all your sins? Oh, yes. Are you willing to accept the process of atonement? <laughs> yes. Very well. Show your dedication and goodwill to the family, and you shall be reinstated among them. Now, please, leave in peace. Oh, pray, Shibe. And... Thank you, esteemed advocate. Next, please step forward. I, I wholeheartedly confess to you. Please, pardon my sins. Rest assured, I have implored their presence to be with us. As long as you are sincere, absolution will be granted. Oh, oh great. You know, I... I arrived in Panacone as a stowaway. I sold everything to get a ticket. My house, my land, and my two children. I see. Please, go on. My children were starving. And I hoped they'd have a chance at survival if they became slaves here. If, if I can strike it rich here, I'll lift them out of that situation and give them 
the life they deserve. But the Bloodhound family got wind of it. They're on my tail, hunting me down. I thought I could bring my kids here. It, it was all my fault. All my fault. The family is ready to forgive all sinners. I'll ask the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. You don't need to live in fear anymore. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll work my hardest to redeem my children and make them part of the family. Praise, praise the harmony. Next, please step forward. Hey, long time no see, Mr. Sunday. The most esteemed individual in Pentacony and the next leader of the Oak family, right? I have sought their presence with us. Let us proceed. Sure, let's just get this over with. <clears throat> I have sinned, please forgive me. I wasted half a pizza at breakfast and a bottle of Soul Glad. That's it, nothing more. Can we wrap this up? I've got a robo-ball game to catch, you know? Do you seek to atone for your sins through good deeds? My sins? Well, I'm starting to sound like a saint, huh? Well, let me tell you something. Neither the family nor you have the right to judge me. You think nobody knows what your precious family has done? About the watchmaker? Huh? <laughs> Don't kid yourself, Featherbrain. Those dream chasers might be fooled by your act. Don't fool yourself. Before you start spouting off your holy verses, answer me this. Where does the power of the Oak family come from? And your power? What makes you think you can sit there all high and mighty, looking down on everyone else? Well, I've spent enough time in confession today to enter the Harmony's paradise, right? Then I'll take my leave. Good luck with your election, and, uh, don't make me regret my investments in you. Oh, revered triple-faced soul, hear my doubts. Who can judge the strong when their power hides their crimes? Who can vouch for the weak when they will pay any price to survive? Who can comfort the purest souls when even they get led astray? If the strong defending the weak is truly the foundation of paradise, then who, who is responsible for the suffering and anguish in this wretched world? Brother? Brother? Brother... Are you all right? I'm... fine. I've been working long hours, and I just made a trip to Dreamflux Reef and back. So, I'm a bit out of sorts. But it'll all be over before we know it. You've been working non-stop on the Germany Festival, Mr. Sunday, and no one could have predicted this incident. Even if the Stellaron does pose a grave threat, I still feel sorry for all the trouble we've caused you. <laughs> no need to worry about troubling anyone. The Charmony Festival was meant to spread joy and harmony across the cosmos. But now that we know the truth, I'm afraid we'll have to cancel it. It has always been our wish to make everyone happy, so... We'll do our best to explain everything to the Dream Master. I'm sure he'll understand. Even if the negotiation does not go smoothly, I'll refuse to go on stage. Without the Chordmaster, the Harmonious Choir would not arrive, and the Charmony Festival would be just a grand performance, and nothing more. <laughs> I'm relieved to see your determination. You know, since arriving in Penacone, we haven't had any contact with this Dream Master himself. I'd heard of the heads of the five major lineages, but the Dream Master is a mystery to me. The Dream Master rarely grants an audience, 
even for us. But, given the urgency of the situation, he's agreed to meet us in person. <laughs> Perhaps he'll be the first guest to meet the Dream Master in years, Mr. Yang. Let's hope we can reach a consensus that satisfies everyone. Indeed. Let us hope so. It's about time. We'll have to get ready for the meeting. I apologize for any inconvenience caused by the urgency. Don't worry. I'll be waiting here. Oh, dear. It's Mr. Sunday! Hey! Come over here! <laughs> Thank you for everything you've done. I'll be waiting here. Oh, Mr. Sunday. Hey there! Okay, see the moon in the sky? It's about the size of the cap on my Soul Glad bottle. If I just reached out my hand, I could grab the moon, couldn't I? The, the moon? You mean the Grand Theater? <laughs> yeah. Look at me. I've been away from home for too long. I must be missing that moon. <laughs> but it's no big deal. The Grand Theater here looks much better than the moon back home. It's just magnificent. They told me not to sell everything I had just to come to Pentaconi. <laughs> How short-sighted. Selling everything you had? Why would you go to such lengths? Why? Can't you see? Life back home is miserable. It's not really living at all. It's better to be here at Pinnacone. No pain, no worries about tomorrow, just sweet dreams. You can do whatever you want. That's what I call living. <laughs> yeah, now this is the life. Is this truly living? <laughs> Huh? What did you say, young lady? I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> oh, it's nothing, sir. You see, the traffic on Glock's Avenue can be dangerous. How about I ask a Bloodhound family member to escort you to Idine Park over there, so you can continue enjoying your sweet dream? Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Wow. No wonder you are the leader of this sweet dream. You're totally a lifesaver. See you around, Mr. Sunday. And uh, it was nice chatting with you. <laughs> What's up, sister? This is the land of the dreams. But why do they live like this? The man we ran into... He doesn't seem happy at all. Even though sweet dreams are nice, they're just illusions. But for him, they're the only way to survive, even if it means giving up on reality. That's not really living at all. I suppose you have a point. But, in my opinion, that's how most people live their lives. Why do you say that? You think that man is not actually living... But that's not quite accurate. Even without Panacone, people create their own illusions called self-value. People believe they have a predetermined value to fulfill. Gaining value means gaining power, and those deemed worthless are seen as the weak. However, value doesn't come out of thin air, and there's a limit to it. To accumulate value, People have to take from others, so the weak get exploited and oppressed. Are you suggesting that this is not how things should be? Exactly. But, ironically, people don't think there's anything wrong with it, because they uphold the illusory notion of self-value, and even the weak believe in it. The survival of the fittest. That's where all the tragedies in the world come from. People come to the sweet dream in Panacone to escape from that reality and find solace. 
No tragedies exist here. Only happiness. Although in its nascent form. Isn't that the same paradise we yearn for in our dreams? Uh, perhaps that man is just an exception. Let's not jump to conclusions. We should experience the dreamscape ourselves. Just as I did at Dreamflux Reef. Yes. Seeing is believing. I'll accompany you. The Dream Master hasn't shown up yet, so we have some time for a stroll. Glad to meet you again, Robin! How are the preparations for the Charmony Festival coming along? We're all so excited about it. <laughs> it's going smoothly. Thanks for making the trip to join the festival. You're too kind, Robin. It's a pleasure to have guests from all over the universe celebrating day and night. I can't stand being lonely or bored, so this jubilant dreamscape is perfect for me. But if this went on forever, would it get boring too? <sighs> nah, not at all. Who would get tired of having so much fun? Every day, you get to wear fancy clothes, uh, explore all sorts of dream bubbles, indulge in delicious food without gaining weight, and you never get old or sick. As long as you can afford a room, this place is the ultimate paradise. But you know that only a few things can be brought back from the dreamscape to reality, right? That's exactly why I don't plan on bringing anything back. Just enjoying the dream itself is good enough for me. I mean, I'm not one of those long-living species. I only have around 60 or 70 years in this lifetime, and uh, there's so much to worry about. Being happy here is pure bliss. Only in this sweet dream can I truly feel like I'm in control of my life and fate. Who would want to go back to reality after experiencing this bliss? <laughs> I see. I genuinely wish you all the happiness in the world. And I wish you a fantastic performance, Robin! I'm off to the blue hour for the ball. See you later. <sighs> Seems like that guest's perspective didn't resonate with you either. She had a valid point. I could sense her genuine happiness. It's just that... What you're trying to say is... She thinks she's in control of her life, but in reality, she's just escaping from reality and seeking solace in this sweet dream. Once she steps out of this sanctuary, everything will be lost. Well, she did make mention of being able to afford a room, didn't she? However, the paradise in our dreams, it doesn't have to end. No. And the paradise we yearn for shouldn't be just a fleeting dream either. The scenery in this dreamscape is truly breathtaking, isn't it? Oh, Robin. Can't believe I'm meeting you in person here. What an honor. <laughs> You're right. Even though time stands still in this dreamscape, it always feels fresh. I find something new every time. A philosophical mind. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, not at all. No. With little time left, I yearn for meaningful conversations. Especially with someone as esteemed as you. Do you mind if we chat? It's my pleasure. No need to be formal. Just speak your mind. You said, with little time left. Please, forgive me for being blunt. But is that why you came to Penacony? <laughs> yeah. I was part of a war, and while escaping from the Sarkozian mothership, I got exposed to some radioactive materials. And then, all my comrades died, and 
My hometown was wiped out by neutron bombardments. I couldn't bear to live with everything I knew gone. That's when I heard about a possible solution here, so I came. How heart-wrenching. I hope the family has been able to help you. And they have, and I'm truly grateful for that. They provided me with a comfortable room, the most advanced life support services in the cosmos, and a stellar team of caregivers. My physical body is now in the dream pool, sustained by life support. The me you see here is whole, rational, and no different from any other person. But I can't say the same for the me in the hotel room. My true appearance. No. I hope you never have to witness it, Robin. So... You'll be living forever in this dreamscape. Right? <laughs> Just being able to live at all is good enough for me. Whether it's in this dreamscape or not, well... I don't really have much say in the matter. My world has been torn apart. And my life could end any second. So, even if this whole place is an illusion, it's still my paradise. And I'll treasure every moment I spend here. <laughs> How I envy those everlasting things. That old man's story. It's so tragic. Fortunately, this sweet dream gives him joyful memories to hold on to for the rest of his life. That's precisely why this sweet dream in Penacony exists. However, even this sweet dream has its limitations. While it provides solace to the disillusioned, it can't completely eliminate pain in reality. There will be a way out. Penacony is already on the right track. here a lovely young lady wait is that me brother what a surprise to see you again show yourself your trick won't work on us I've heard that a skilled mass fool received an invitation too that must be you right did you enjoy yourself? Barely. The people here are way too gullible. A little bait is all it takes for them to bite. And they run away at the slightest hint of danger. In other words, they're naive and cowardly. Now that you've had your fill, it'd be wise to leave before it's too late. The music of the Harmony doesn't tolerate discord. What? Now that you have the real Robin, I'm useless? Oh, how disheartening. I've done so much for the family. You should be thanking me, because if it weren't for me cleaning up this mess, Penacone would still be in shambles. Don't you think? That was a personal request from the head of the Iris family, and it has nothing to do with us. Step aside and stop causing trouble for the Charmony Festival. The Charmony Festival? <laughs> you think you can scare me? You think I have no idea what you're planning? I don't care what you're thinking, chicken wing boy. But I'm pretty sure our lovely Robin won't be appearing on stage. After all, you're well aware of what a sorry state this dreamscape is in under the banner of Harmony. Hanakoni, the land of the dreams. Is this truly the paradise you desire? Stop it. <laughs> What's the rash, chicken wing boy? Did I get to you? Our paradise is none of your concern, Mast Fool. Leave now, or the family won't tolerate you anymore. All right, all right. I'll go. But Robin, I suggest you seriously consider this. Do you really believe those living in dreams can escape pain and find true happiness? 
<sighs> well, I've done my part. And now I'm simply waiting for the fireworks to begin. Here, the last two gifts for both of you. And don't lose them. If by some unfortunate chance the Charmony Festival starts against all odds, remember to use them during the show. And it'll be thrilling. Then I heard a raven calling in the distance. It seems the Dream Master will arrive soon. Let's wait here for the Dream Master to arrive. Okay. By the way, brother, I heard you no longer have a sweet tooth. Back when we were kids, you used to steal my desserts. Seems like a lot has changed during my absence. What exactly happened? Well, someone has to stay awake even in this sweet dream. But that someone doesn't have to be you, or anyone in particular. You're carrying too much on your shoulders, brother. The paradise in our dreams... It shouldn't be like this. Hanakoni is nothing more than a dream. It can't erase the worries and pain of reality, or bring you happiness. It only offers an escape from reality. Nothing more. Remember the old man we met earlier? Without this dream, he might have completely lost himself. That might be true, but even without Penacone, he could have chosen another path. As far as I know, the Intelligentsia Guild has been promoting their rehabilitation techniques for a long time now. That path may have been more ordinary and challenging, but now he is receiving hospice care in a comatose state and his fate is sealed. Is Panacone granting these people a future? Or is it taking it away from them? Well, don't forget this. Not everyone really has a future. The future for humanity is like the sky for birds. People mistakenly believe that flight is inherent to birds because they've never witnessed those birds crashing to their death. Do you remember how we took in that little Charmony dove when we were young? Yeah, we took care of it. Provided food and water, groomed its feathers. And later, when I decided to leave Penacone, I opened the cage and set it free. Well, I... I didn't mention what happened to it in my letters, because I didn't want to upset you. Shortly after you left, it crashed to its death right in front of your window. I had surmised as much. I knew you wouldn't have avoided mentioning the bird for no reason. Despite that unfortunate outcome, I still believe it was the right decision. Birds aren't meant to spend their lives in cages. They belong in the sky, even if they can't fly. But here's the thing. If there are birds in this world that can never fly, can we really assert that they belong in the sky? Are you implying that the same goes for humans too? Let's take the Astral Express as an example. The Nameless made tremendous efforts to bridge worlds, gaining fame across the universe. However, only a few extraordinary individuals can endure such a perilous journey. That's because the pursuit of the Trailblaze exceeds the capabilities of ordinary humans. Otherwise, why would this path be filled with broken rails, an abandoned express, and even a fallen eon? That's just... sophistry. If that were true, then only the powerful would have the right to determine the future. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. Another name for the future is self-value. 
while this world has its fair share of heroes who inspire people and garner admiration for their heroic deeds, the majority of ordinary people will never become heroes in their lifetime. Some are born weak and vulnerable. Some find themselves trapped in unfortunate circumstances. Some fall victim to malice and cowardice. When it comes to survival, everyone is equal. And the weak can only watch as their value gets constantly diminished by external forces. That's why we should care for the weak and support them as if their suffering were our own. That's what the Odes of Harmony have always taught us. While the Harmony holds noble aspirations, the strong will always be strong, and the weak will always be weak. Even in this carefree dream, human nature contains greatness, but it also harbors inherent weaknesses that can't be eradicated. In the end, if people can't even secure their own survival, they won't care about the illusory future of equality. As long as the law of survival of the fittest prevails, there will always be fledglings crashing to their death. But if people don't live for the future, do they merely exist for survival? If even you, my brother, don't believe that the Harmony will save the weak, then which eon can make our dreams come true? People often forget that when the first bird took flight, the entire world envisioned a future where no more fledglings would ever crash to their death. Are you reading, sister? What are you reading? Mr. Gopher White gave me a picture book. It's about the story of the harmonic strings. If I could become a chord master, I'd like to summon... Dominicus, the harmonious choir. I want to sing with everyone and spread our wishes so that all can feel happiness and joy. <laughs> I see. Then... I would summon the Harmonious Choir, too. Don't you... have a wish of your own, brother? Of course I do. It's just that... it includes your wish and everyone else's. I long for a true paradise where everyone can find peace. Then, let's build a stage there and invite everyone to our performance so that both our wishes come true through the power of the Harmonious Choir. It's a deal, then. Yeah, it's a deal. But how can I become a chord master? Hmm. Maybe you will have to become a star first. You're back sooner than I thought. Any results? Yes. And now, it's up to us to forge ahead. <laughs> Since he's already carried out his last wish, my final mission is complete. But pardon me if I sound curt. It's good to have determination. The path Mikhail left for you is not an easy one to tread. Why else would he have chosen to sleep in solitude, staking everything on some nameless in the future? But you have the numbers, and in numbers comes strength. So that might just delay your inevitable a little more. Uh, got any more encouraging words? As I see it, relying on Welt's negotiations alone is far from enough. Regardless of whether the other party will be compliant, Negotiating simply allows us to meet them as equals, and won't grant us an upper hand. Panacone is our rival's home turf, and we already have very few chips left to play with. Rather than idly sit around while the family's got us blocked off, an offensive approach might be a wiser course of action. We're more familiar with the Stellaron's properties than most, and since it's the key to stabilizing the sweet dream, it's vital to the family's interests. 
By attacking their core interests, they're bound to retaliate hastily. And as the saying goes, haste makes waste. That's right. As long as we pose a threat to the Stellaron, either with words or otherwise, we have a chance at gaining the upper hand. But the problem is, on the eve of the Charmony Festival opening, how exactly are we going to get close to the theater? Family security will be airtight. And if we brute force it, even if we succeed, it's too risky. Hmm. So, no one's gonna say anything? Then I'll raise my hand. I know the answer to this question. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, you'd better believe it. So, I heard that before the Charmony Festival begins, there'll be a pageant to kick off the festival. It's called the... Soul Glad TM Festivity Auditions, or something, and it's going to be held in the moment of Scorch Sand. As long as we clinch the top spot, we'll be able to attain the title of Festive Superstar, and be able to personally bask in the graces of Miss Robin. Uh, not that that's important. <laughs> What's crucial is that we can enter the Grand Theater before the audience arrives. So... How do we go about participating in these festivity auditions? <laughs> I've already procured special invite tickets from Miss Robin's fan club. Uh, to tell you the truth, I had been preparing to join the auditions all along. But now it looks like even if I scrape through, I probably still won't have the chance to shake Miss Robin's hand. So they're still running this thing, huh? It was originally just a publicity stunt, set up by Mikhail to drum up attention. But it looks like it might be worth a shot. We'll follow Marge's plan. Mr. Gallagher, will you be joining us? I'm afraid I won't have the time. As a virtual character, I've already completed my final mission. Whether Penacone can awaken from this dream is all down to you. Should we ever cross paths again? I'd love for you to visit the Express. All right. I'll have to add to that data bank of yours you've got on the Express. And Miss Firefly, we thank you for all your support. We're faced with a formidable enemy. As long as the Astral Express and Stellaron Hunter's objectives are aligned, we're willing to cooperate with you. We've already come this far together. I'd like to join you for the rest of your journey on Penacone. I'm pleased that we can finally fight shoulder to shoulder. I couldn't ask for a better ending. This is also the spirit of the Trailblaze. Now everyone, let's prepare to move out. As the last group of contestants, how confident are you in overcoming all of the challenges? Would you be open to a brief exclusive interview with us? It'll be quick. Your journey is long and fraught with peril, yet under a sky blanketed by banners, you buy for the crown. The sword and rose! Protect the beauty, the beauty, the beauty! Magnificent and majestic! A knight's head is hard as steel. Brother Lance Focus is stubborn as a heel. We don't all have to be winners, but if we don't have fun, <laughs> we'd all be sinners. People are pouring in. Kinda feels like all sorts of baddies are showing up. 
Let's get in there quickly and enter the competition. Ladies and gentlemen, please make way. Make way. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the director of Soul Glad's factory, Ideen Lina. My four friends, introduce yourselves to the audience across the cosmos. Mm, hello, everybody. I'm Himiko, a nameless from the Astral Express, and these are my companions. Ahem. <clears throat> Don't you guys need to hide your identities? I can't hide it anyways. Penacony is plastered with our posters. And because the Astral Express is so well known, the family won't dare to make any rash moves. Adventures. So it's a bunch of nameless guests. This final face-off is bound to be spectacular. Time is precious. My four friends, come with me. Grab a bottle of so glad and make your dreams a blast. This place is buzzing. That's right. This venue is a miniature representation of that time known as the era filled with boundless possibilities. Grab a bottle of Soul Glad and make your dreams of black. Nameless, your arrival reminds me of the grand occasion when Penacony was first established. I was still a young, bright-eyed lad back then, lured here by the watchmaker's ads, full of zeal and ready to make my first fortune in life. Once, during a particularly grueling day, I passed out and was resuscitated by a drink from Mr. Sousa. That sweet taste has since been etched in my mind, and that was what drove me to create the soul glad that we all know and love today. The dream-chasing era was truly a wondrous time. Oh, I miss those days and the watchmaker. Scorch Sand Paul is my homage to that time of boundless possibilities. I wholeheartedly hope you make it to the finish and emerge as the next superstars of Pentecone. Now then, is there anything you'd like to say before the competition officially begins? the trailblazing spirit. How about you, Miss March? Hello, everyone! Next up, get ready for the Mega March 7th Adventure, where I'm going to break the speedrun world record! Trailblazing into the uncharted and challenging the limits. That's Miss March 7th for you. How about Miss Firefly? I hope that by the end of this journey, Everyone will have achieved the outcome that they hoped for. Ah, a wonderful wish! Miss Himiko, what are you expecting from your team? Safety first, everyone. <laughs> Simple words, but full of warmth. Waiting for you are three stages, each connected to that era. The first two stages offer two distinct paths to choose from, with unique challenges on each route. And in the last stage, you will face off against a champion who has defended the title to this very day. A beloved contender whose noble virtues are unrivaled. Those are the rules. Simple. Everyone clear? Now, I hereby announce that the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival of the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises, has started.
Everyone, as the Charmony Festival is drawing closer, we must reach the end as quickly as possible. Factoring in efficiency and safety, splitting up into two groups is the best choice. March and I haven't known Miss Firefly for too long and aren't overly familiar with her. It'd probably be better if the two of you paired up. Fine by me. Let's do it. All right. I don't have a problem with that. We'll split into the assigned groups then. Let's not waste time. Welcome to the first stage of Soul Glad Enterprises 33rd Scorch Sand Festival of the 20th season, Dream Play Fantasia. In this stage, you can choose between two challenges, the School of Acting or School of Action. In the School of Acting challenge, you have to complete three performances from three scripts and move the panel judges. In the School of Action challenge, you have to defeat three groups of enemies convincingly and reach the end. Now, make your choice. to introduce the rules of this challenge to you. There are three stages up ahead. On each, you will find an outline of a script. These three scripts were written by the legendary filmmaker, The Watchmaker, and depict various stories from Pinnacoli's era of pioneering. Your task is to bring those moments to life, find the right words, and act convincingly to make the judges feel the script's intended emotions. Oh, I wish you a successful performance. Also, a bit of trivia. The record score for this stage is held by a participant with fiery red hair. His exceptional performance brought even the strictest judge to tears. <laughs> it's like he wasn't even acting at all. Uh, <laughs> we are running out of time, so let's get this over with quickly. Quality. Since you've come as a pair, I'll prep a two-person scene for you. You two, are you ready? Envision that you both, driven by the spirit of exploration, are arriving at the land of dreams that is Panacone for the first time. But instead of lush lands, you find yourselves amidst swirling sands and desolation. Far from the paradise the watchmaker described. You're driving an old clunker through the wilderness of the dreamscape, braving the cold wind, choking on the dust, and suddenly a fierce memory zone meme blocks your path. Now, Mr. Greyhair, what line would you deliver to express your disappointment in Pentagony? No, that's not right. You're trying to express disappointment. Why do you sound so... Very good. Now, though you're disappointed, your screen partner is conversely very enthusiastic. Now, young lady, you will say... And then, 
we cut to the story's next scene. You find a job mending the rails, but the days are long and your endurance can't keep up and you finally collapse in the endless expanse of the desert. Suddenly, sweet rain falls from the sky, wetting your lips and rousing your spirits. Now, Mr. Greyhair, what line will best express your surprise at this moment? But at this moment, your partner yet gazes into the sky, both her eyes closed. The raindrops fall, blurring her vision, and she tragically says, Perhaps we were never meant to succeed. Right? Fantastic! Both of you have an incredibly solid foundation in dialogue delivery. However, lines aren't everything in a performance. Please continue this story on the second stage. Up next, you'll be challenged with a body language test. I hope these tests won't take too long. Here, you two are required to skillfully utilize body language to portray the story context I've laid out for you. Picking up from where we left off, a heavy downpour saves you both stranded in the desert. This rain quenches the anger in your heart. You look to your companion, now completely devoid of fighting spirit, wanting to comfort her. At this moment, what should you do to make her laugh? You seriously think that would make someone laugh? about body language. I don't think dialogue is allowed here. Uh? What? <laughs> right answer. Your companion sees you rolling about in the sand and thinks about the arduous obstacles along this journey. She can't help but let loose a laugh rekindling hope in her heart. And so this girl... I'm... gonna get back on my feet and keep moving forward. A tug at the heartstrings! The story continues to develop. The heavy rain leads you both to sense a business opportunity. So you start venturing into the umbrella industry. But just as the business begins to pick up, Competitors start flooding the market with low-priced goods, squeezing your market share. You have no choice. The goods you stockpile at high prices have to be sold at a loss. This is a pretty self-destructive move, which drives your business to the brink of bankruptcy. At this moment, what would you, who refuses to admit defeat, decide to do? It's a pity your friend does not agree. Seeing that you're up to your eyeballs in debt, she sees nothing but despair in her future. And then... Uh, I leave Penacony in utter disappointment. Is that okay? <gasps> of course, absolutely. I was this close to tears. Both of you possess exceptional acting talent. However, the true test is yet to come. You're about to encounter the harshest judge this show has ever seen. You'll need to rely on perfect performances if you want to win them over. Actually, all the 
those scenarios that you previously encountered were all from the film Once Upon a Time in Dreams. Two companions arrive on Panacone with nothing but a dream. Their desire for achievement is met with continuous setbacks. Ultimately, one continues on, despite spiraling into debt, while the other concedes defeat and leaves. Many years later, their paths cross once more in the thriving Penacony. Yet, they refuse to acknowledge each other because... Against the backdrop of a revitalized Penacony, the joy of reunion mixes with the sorrow of past separation, the awkwardness of being strangers, and the shyness of a long-awaited encounter, all converging at this very moment. Give it a shot. Try and convey this bittersweet scene to me. Bring it to life with precise and emotive acting. <sighs> Your performance is far from satisfactory. God! I never imagined that such a sad scene could be portrayed by you two in such a joyful and heartwarming way. Two people sharing a long cherished friendship, as if time and status meant nothing to them. Huh? But we haven't even done anything! Is his imagination running wild again? Brilliant! Your portrayal outdoes the original. <laughs> it's simply, simply. Hurry up! The Stellaron is at stake! Congrats to both of you for clearing the stage, but more importantly, are you having fun? <laughs> fun is more important than success! Look at the time! You finished much faster than that red-haired contestant did! <laughs> that red-haired contestant? Who is that exactly? You'll find out eventually, but only if you clear the next test first. Welcome to the second stage of the 33rd Scotch Sand Festival in the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises. Gunfire time! You have the option to choose gunfire and undergo Brother Hanu's trial, or time, where you'll face Clocky's trial. And now, make your choice! Welcome to the wonderful world created by the Watchmaker. <laughs> Awaiting you up ahead is the titular character from the beloved Clocky animation, Clocky! It's said that the Watchmaker dreamed up the idea of Clocky when he was just a boy. Back then, he was merely an apprentice in a clock shop, and one night, he dreamt that all the broken clocks started sprouting arms and legs. Like a skilled pilot, he steered them towards the right path. As a classic figure who grew up with many, Clocky truly shaped a generation, solidifying the Watchmaker's pivotal role in popular culture. 
contestants. May you have a wonderful time with Chloe. <laughs> the trial of time. I hope it won't waste too much of our time. You. Did it just speak? Am I just a failed experiment? I'm just an expendable failure of a clock, aren't I? Play? So I'm not just a failed clock, I'm also a failed toy. You guys are just like the other challengers. You want to enter my inner self? Then please be my guest. But you won't find anything worthwhile. I'm just a failed piece. See? I'm just empty inside. Tick tock. It's time for me to make an appearance. Clocky? Uh, I can also see him. Is this character part of the show? In Dreamville, Clocky is everywhere and can do anything! Like, right now! I could solve this problem with your big ticker pal, Tick Tock! I can't believe it's actually Clocky! Why would you come and visit a failure of a clock like me for no reason? You see, we're all clocks. We're family. I want to help you be happy. Tell your pal Clocky what's troubling you. I, I came across a startling revelation yesterday. Apparently, Dreamscape Ticker isn't the same as Clocky at all. It's just a discarded prototype from Clocky's early development. Please, just leave me be, Clocky. I just don't know how to face you, because I'm just a failure. Oh dear, seeing it like this is utterly heart-wrenching. <laughs> but fear not, we're here to help it rediscover the missing parts of its inner self and guide it out of despair. Yes, even troop members can experience existential crises. Don't worry, miss. I've already pinpointed its missing parts. Over here, my friends. Better use that hamster ball night speed. This must be one of the missing parts that Big Tigger needs. We're here. There's a missing part on the opposite side. But how do we get over there? There's also a dream side left here by a dream weaver. We're running out of time. We'll have to use it if necessary. Spring forth the gleam of old blades. Quickly! This 
that all? I'm okay. In the name of Landau, years of cold, pardons the will. We shall never fall! This is where, from the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering souls. Lamps ablaze! Flaming lamps! Forward! Fracture! Let me tend to your wounds! I hope you're prepared. As the dawns do, destined for oblivion. You will know just. I weep for the departed. Dust rains. The two shall fall. Looks like somebody needs a dog. Look, listen, feel. Lance at the ready. To the finish! This ends here. Another jip from the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering souls. In the name of Landau, years of cold, pardons the will. We shall never fall! I'm on guard. Indestructible. Existence is fleeting as the dawns do, destined for oblivion. Let me ten Lamps ablaze. Flaming lamp. Did you come here of your own? From the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering souls. I hope you're prepared. Look, listen, feel, kick! Lance at the ready. Fracture! You will know justice. In the name of Landau, years of cold, pardons the will. We shall never fall! Another journey existence is fleeting as the dawns do, destined for oblivion. I'm on guard. I weep for the departed. Dust rains. The two shall fall. This ends here. In the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering souls. Lance at the ready. Defend the weak. Did you come here of existence as fleeting as the dawns do, destined for oblivion? Help me! Looks like Look, 
Listen, feel, kick! I hope you're prepared. <laughs> Name of Landau. Years of cold. Pardons the will. We shall never fall. <laughs> Time to. What's in your prescription? Nice teamwork. Another journey from the still waters of oblivion. I guide the wandering souls. Might be ten to you. I'm on guard. Lance of Blaze. Flaming Lance. Forward! Fracture! You will know justice. Did you come here? Existence is fleeting as the dawns do, destined for oblivion. Lance at the ready. Look, listen, feel, kick! I hope you're for the die is cast. Another blood debt repaid. missing parts. Let's hurry back. We don't want to keep Big Ticker waiting.
As long as you have these, you'll be able to find closure. Tick tock. Wow, this sudden surge of joy. It's working, tick tock. Next, we just need to enter its emoscape, help connect its pathways, and we're done. There is only one who can be Pentacone's festive superstar. In the final stage, you will face the defending champion. If you fail, you will lose the opportunity to become the festive superstar. Welcome to the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival's third stage in the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises Superstar Showdown. I just saw someone. Someone extraordinary. Uh, 
Are you... a knight of beauty? Beneath the silent waters lies an endless abyss! <laughs> <laughs> Changing beneath the silent waters lies an endless abyss. <laughs> the flesh wound. Bear witness. Rise to the chest. You are fighting a gentleman. Look, listen, feel, kick! Again, the ill tiny manifest. I weep for the departed. Dust rings. It too shall fall. Has truly blessed me. The soul is bleeding as the dawns do, destined for oblivion. The flesh wound. My gallant friend, put forth all your might. In the name of Landau, years of cold, pardons the will. We shall never fall. The seal of ill fate descends. In the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering soul. Rise to the chum. Behold, this symbol of pure beauty. You will know justice. The die is cast. 
again, the ill timing manifest. Rise to the challenge. Let the duel commence. My gallant friend, put forth all your might. <laughs> The flesh wound! Another jerk system as fleeting as the dawn's dew, destined for a blink. Memories are ever changed beneath the silent waters. Slides an endless abyss! <laughs> <laughs> Bear witness. Talk. You are fighting a gentleman. What would you like to know this? <laughs> Rise to the challenge. I weep for the departed. <laughs> Dust rain. It too shall fall. I hope you're prepared. Pledge thy loyalty. In the name of Landau, years of cold, pardons the wind. We shall never fall! My gallant friend, put forth all your might. The threads of death, the seal of ill fate, descends. In the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering soul. The flesh wound. Yeah, is that all? My gallant friend, put forth all Please your might. Manner. You will know justice. Rise to the challenge. What would you like? Huh. The spell is fleeting as the dawn still, destined for a blip. The flesh wound. Behold, the symbol of pure beauty. Let the duel commence. Again, the ill tidings manifest. Beneath the silent waters lies an endless abyss. <laughs> time. May fate allow us to meet again, Knight of Beauty. 
In that case, let's make our way to the end. Panacone's really thronging with talent. I hope we make it in time. Congratulations to the both of you on becoming the festive superstars of this year's Charmony Festival. Before entering the Grand Theater, I, on behalf of the organizers, extend my sincere congratulations to you, wishing you joy under their radiance. As previously promised, my sister, Mr. Yang, and I have met with the Dream Master. We delved into the truth about Panacone and its Stellaron, and have come to a consensus. Both I and the Oak family cannot acquiesce to your request. Just as expected. We acknowledge the perspective of you, Nameless. Panacone does require change, but not as you propose. The planet of festivities cannot and will not revert to a place characterized by chaos, disorder, or anarchy. Through your journey of overcoming obstacles, you must have glimpsed the essence of that era. The vulnerable ruthlessly eliminated, equality non-existent, common folk living precarious lives, eking out a dreary existence. Ultimately, only heroes like yourselves manage to achieve success. But I would dare ask, if you did not possess the special status of having a Stellaron, and you were but an anonymous and frail member among the masses, which Penacone would you prefer? A dystopia for the survival of the fittest? Or a sweet dream paradise for all? That's not the point! Don't let him mislead you! Mr. Sunday, even if the members of the Oak family can't fully agree on what to do about the Stellaron, Now's not exactly the time to be holding an extensive discourse about Penacone's past and future, is it? The Stellaron issue concerns the life and death of everyone on Penacone. If anyone has a better suggestion, the crew is more than willing to listen. Also, it'd be best to tell us the ins and outs of that meeting. This way, we'll at least know what Welt and Miss Robin are dealing with, and the reason why they failed to make our appointment. Ah, Navigator. That is precisely my intention. With all present, let's begin by discussing the details of that meeting. Let's talk about our tribulations and choices, our ideals and beliefs, and our final course of action. The only path to take. You mean to say that for the longest time, 
There have been scoundrels who would use the Charmody Festival that I have bequeathed to the masses as a tool to realize their ambition. Indeed, Dream Master. Once the Charmony Festival begins, the Stellaron's powers, along with the song, will be broadcast across the entire planet of Penacony. And then everyone in their dreams will be unable to awaken. Hmm. This is indeed surprising to me. The dreamscape is maintained by the collective effort of the five families. If someone were to use the Charmony Festival to recklessly disseminate the power of the Stellaron, this individual must hold a position of great authority. Do you have any suspects? I'd like to ask, did you really not know of the Stellaron's existence? <sighs> I would have never thought that this nameless would point the spear at me. Quite astonishing indeed. If I have offended, the Astral Express extends its sincere apologies. But the current circumstances are dire and leave no room for meticulous inquiry. We're doing this out of concern for the Dreamscape's safety. So, if you could, please alleviate our concerns. Dream Master, it's just to prove that the Charmony Festival has nothing to do with the Stellaron. If we're being overly cautious, I will return to the stage to offer tribute in song, just per the arrangement. Hmm. Sunday, Robin. I've watched you two grow up and know your dispositions like the back of my hand. Both of you, right now, can surely be lauded as their most devout advocates. I already know your resolve. The magnitude of this matter is enormous and cannot be taken lightly. Since Mr. Yang has asked with such earnestness, I will personally respond in kind. If there is a need, the entire Oak family will be mobilized to heed your call. Someday, might I ask you to beseech them to cast their light unto me and question me in their stead so that no lies may be concealed? I will do as you command. Robin, could I entrust you to be present as a witness, to document the truth? And, and to, to proclaim, proclaim my innocence, so that, that all slander may be utterly dispelled. I will do as you command. May thy will be carried out on earth, just as it is in the heavens. Oh, triple-faced soul, please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron, so that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. Let us begin. There is nothing else to prepare. Understood. Question. Have you devoted your life to your god, never worshipping other gods? Naturally. Do you love your god as you do yourself, always heeding their admonishments? Naturally. Have you strayed from the path expected by your god, Betraying their name? Never. Have you ever been inordinate with your asks of your god? Coveting more than the foundation of the creation itself? Never. Then, a final question. Do you swear to fulfill all vows, past, present, and future? With the Eon as my witness, if I do not deliver on my words, or if I renege on my vows, may I be cursed in accordance with divine law. They have seen your faith, and have endorsed your faith. With this, it can be evidenced... Just a moment. What is it, Mr. Yang? I have another question I hope to have answered. 
To my understanding, the family's harmony and prosperity have never relied on so-called divine laws. But God, you both mentioned, are they truly Shipei? Mr. Yang should know that those belonging to the family toil together as if they were king, embracing solidarity and unity under their light. All duplicity is laid bare before the harmony. Such a delicate and complex symphony. Which other god could perfectly harmonize this if not for the great one? Perfectly harmonize it. Therein lies the problem. It isn't an outsider lurking in the shadows who changed the harmony, but a dissonance that has surreptitiously emerged from within this very symphony itself. In the distant past, there existed an eon. With one flick of the wrist, they crafted the laws of the cosmos. Their followers formed the Beyond the Sky Choir, spreading solemn and reverent hymns throughout the universe. Later, they fell. The route traversed by this eon clashed with the harmony, ultimately being absorbed and fused into it. The chorus that once reverberated across worlds fell silent, and when it echoed anew, it was transformed into the hymn of harmony. Though an eon may perish, paths with no masters still linger. In the all-forgiving harmony, Echoes of bygone dissonance may subtly arise. Mr. Yang, being overly astute can be a detriment. Especially when you find yourself alone and without allies. Hmm. So this is how it is. For the sake of our grand cause, Sunday. Please afford these two an opportunity to rest. What? Sorry, Robin. It's just you. I did not wish for you to know this. It's a pity that things have turned out this way. So, this is the true reason I can't sing? The shadow that envelops Penacony is actually... We were never children of the Harmony. Our ideal paradise could not have been crafted by Shipe. True bliss can only be guaranteed by the one who transcends the many. Within the foundation of law, humanity establishes civilization and through harmony, we obtain order. Unbelievable. To think that there would be remnants of the order on Penacony. What have you done with Mr. Yang and Miss Robin? Don't worry. I just gave them some time alone to ponder their fates. You should know that these actions make you an enemy of the Astral Express. Should we need to stand against the Nameless, it would only be myself and the Oak family involved. But we haven't reached that point yet, have we? Your efforts for the justice of Panacone are evident to everyone and have been widely observed. Smart kid. You're just as sharp as the other one. If it is the order that drove you to imprison Welt and Robin, and you're using them to coerce our compliance, then there'll be no point in entertaining any type of discussion. You're mistaken, Miss Himiko. They are in very safe hands, and just as the family has always proclaimed, no one can be harmed in the dreamscape, least of all in the beautiful new world belonging to the order. Panacone and the entire universe have witnessed far too much innocent bloodshed. The strong wield their blades against the weak, and the victors push the vanquished to the brink of life. Natural selection. The world abides by this principle, establishing the well-being of humanity 
atop the corpses of the downtrodden. Only we, or rather, I, possess the power to put an end to this farce. So you've decided to resurrect a dead Eon? No one's ever done such a thing. If Miss Himiko is interested, let's draw back the veil and speak candidly. I've always firmly believed that people can understand one another through peaceful means. I'm willing to divulge the unembellished truth as to the intentions of the Order's path striders, so that you will make better judgment for the Astral Express, for Panacone, and for this stretch of the universe. Words can hardly do justice to the beauty of that ideal. So, come with me, everyone. Let us retrace our steps and see once again where this road leads. Huh? Where'd he go? Welcome. This isn't any location in Penacone's dreamscape. It's my inner world. The reason the scenery before you remains unchanged is because your consciousness has drawn on similar concepts to fill in the gaps. Did you do the same to Welt? It's a tuning process. Stronger in effect and more draining on the mind. The gray-haired guest has experienced it before, so he should understand what it entails. Tuning allows you to intuitively grasp my feelings, which also means that I cannot hide anything from you. Now, everyone, please look at the huge screen. The road we once took begins here. From this point on, you will witness the numerous decisions I've faced. I've selected a portion of these to share with you. I believe after going through similar predicaments, you'll be able to better understand my thoughts. Let's begin. The first decision. A story about a baby bird. This story happened when Robin and I were very young. We were victims of the Stellaron disaster, and the family's Mr. Gopher Wood, who would later become the Dream Master of Penacone, saw that we siblings had no one to turn to and took us in. Later on, Robin and I lived the time with nary a care in the world. One day, after dinner, while my younger sister and I were lounging about in Mr. Gopher Wood's yard, we spotted a fledgling Charmony Dove all on its own. That baby bird was tiny. It didn't even have all of its feathers, and it couldn't sing. When we found it, it was already on its last breath, having fallen into a shrub, probably abandoned by its parents. We decided to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold, with fierce winds at night in the yard, not to mention the many poisonous bugs and wild beasts in the vicinity. It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, it stood no chance of surviving until spring. So, I suggested we take it inside, place it on the shelf by the window, and asked the adults to fashion a cage for it. We decided that when it regained its strength enough to spread its wings, we would release it back into the wild. The tragic part, something that we'd never considered, was that this bird's fate had already been determined long before this moment. Its destiny was determined by our momentary whim. Now, I pass the power of choice to you all. Faced with this situation, what choice would you make? Stick to the original plan, and build a nest with soft net where the Charmony Dove fell. Or build a cage for it, and feed it, giving it the utmost care from within the warmth of a home. I eagerly await your answer.
Interesting. Since you've made up your mind, allow me to reveal what fate this choice will bring to the fledgling. From what I've observed, there are at least three predators in that yard that prey on small birds. The Vosicle Scorpion, Asdana Wolverine, and the Huntington Winged Snake. Even if they shy away from humans, these animals are still near apex predators in a fenced location like a yard. In such a location, only one fate awaits that little charmony dove. A painful death. As for the choice you made, I am deeply sorry. Now, let us advance to the second decision. This time, it's the story of a dream chaser. This story happened when I was appointed as Bronze Melodia, a position exclusive to the Oak family, charged with listening to the problems and vexations of dreamscape residents, and providing them with the relevant guidance. It was during that period that I had the opportunity to hear voices from all corners of the dreamscape. Joy. Sorrow. Arrogance. Regret. The complex tapestry of human nature that formed the world. And I was fortunate to catch a glimpse of it. He was a dream chaser. And an illegal stowaway. Just like the rest of them, he came to Panacone in search of a better life. Except that, to most people, the price he paid. I suppose you could say it was everything. He told me, I sold everything I could at home. The house, the land, even his two children. He said he could not afford to raise them. And that, at least, they could eat if they lived as slaves. He had a plan in place. He would buy back his children once he had made his fortune, and enjoy Panacone's beautiful dream with them. Alas, his plan to smuggle himself was somewhat clumsy, and he was sniffed out by those pig-headed hounds. After hearing the Dream Chaser's story, I immediately appealed to the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. That way, at least he could live peacefully. But I was still too naive to the ways of the world. I did not anticipate that what I thought was a kind gesture would later lead to dire consequences. I'll tell you the outcome soon. For now, I'd like you all to make a choice. Will you do as I did, and try to convince the Bloodhound family to stop their pursuit, so that the Dream Chaser may live peacefully and realize his wishes? Or will you remain silent, leaving him to languish while the hounds are hot on his heels, until his inevitable judgment arrives? I look forward to everyone's decisions. Who knows? Perhaps they might even alter the outcome of this tragedy. chaser story. If I acted out of kindness, I would probably ask the bloodhounds to stop their pursuit and lend him a hand. But what cruel repercussion would this choice result in? I think Sunday must have been deeply impressed by the limitations of the strong defending the weak through this incident. Surely it has some connection to the baby bird story. And this connection is precisely the breakthrough Sunday aims to use to persuade us. I'd probably choose to ask the bloodhounds to cease their pursuit. It seems illegal stowaways are really quite common on Penacony. I don't think he deserves any sympathy at all. He sold his kids to chase a dream. Even if he intended to go back for them, it's still insanely irresponsible. With that 
thought, there's only one choice. Let the Bloodhound send him back home. This person deserves to be punished. I'm honored to witness you arriving at the same decision. Out of respect, I'll share with you the dire consequences that my choice back then brought about. First, the outcome. He attained major success. After avoiding capture, he ran a business for a few years, very quickly making a name for himself, elevating his status. He might not have become a tycoon like old Artie, but he was considered a character of excellent repute. Now then, did he realize the wish he set out to achieve? No. The last time I saw him was in the real world, where the Hounds were going to permanently exile him, and I was the accompanying Bronze Melodia. The mission was simple. Listen to the criminal's repentance. He told me the reason he was in this predicament was because he conspired to usurp the head of the Alfalfa family. When I asked him about his two children, he instead responded with a question. What children? In the end, my heart aligned with the harmony, and the good deed I dared to undertake held no value, turning instead into a wrongdoing. It created a lamentable oppressor, and countless oppressed individuals. As to your choice, I once again offer my heartfelt apologies. Next comes the third and final decision, and the story this time is my own. This story happened the day I was appointed the Oak family head. At that time, Mr. Gopherwood was the current Dream Master. And, as for his wish, we had a private conversation. What surprised me was that the Dream Master had only come to deliver a letter to me. He let me read its contents, and it was a letter from my sister. The letter contained the usual pleasantries, anecdotes from her travels, nothing out of the ordinary. Just as I started wondering how this letter related to our discussion, the Dream Master began to speak. Do you know who wrote this letter? My sister, of course. But why would you personally visit me to hand me a letter from my sister containing mere trivialities? To help you grasp the full scope of this issue, do you know where Robin is at this moment? From what the letter indicates, she must be in Caspelina 8, correct? She's touring there right now. Correct. Has she mentioned anything about a stray bullet? A stray bullet? What? A war has broken out on that planet. It is because of this very reason that Robin chose this destination. To spread the word of the Harmony. And to save the lives of that planet. She personally made for the front lines. She hoped to ease the people's suffering with song, and was willing to brave mortal danger to deliver the IPC's medical supplies. Unfortunately, stray bullets show no such compassion. Is she all right? If the operation was successful, she should probably be recovering in the field hospital. By the eon above, the bullet struck her neck directly, yet possibly as a reward for her consistent deeds of harmony. It didn't hit any vital arteries. Once you've attended to your outstanding tasks, it'd be advisable to write her back as soon as possible. Those damned savages! I'll pack my bags right away. My gratitude for bringing this to my attention, Mr. Gopherwood. Now you understand why she always wears such elaborate neck ornaments, don't you? How could this happen? Miss Robin? It's all in the past, so please don't worry. 
I share this in the meager hope that you will understand the harmonies, limitations, and predicament. As grandiose as the strong defending the weak sounds, many times, it is nothing more than wishful thinking. Likewise, I've prepared one last question, one last choice. But rest assured, choice will not have any grave consequences, because this is merely a figment of imagination, a nightmare that has haunted me through countless nights. If you ever had the opportunity to make a choice like I did, would you still support Robin's journey on the path of harmony? I often feel like I've dreamt of similar scenes on certain nights. In the dream, I see blurry faces. I don't know who they are, but I sympathize with all of them. Fighting for survival against some unfathomable force. Their confusion and fear are lucid to me. But I also remember they chose never to give up. Just like Miss Robin. Hmm. If Mr. Sunday's question leaves you puzzled, you should find the answer from your own experiences with each trailblaze. Dangers and tribulations will surely follow. But would you ever back away? Would you stop March and Don Hong from reaching their next destination? I believe you have an answer of your own in your heart. Miss Robin's courage is admirable. And here I was thinking she was just another superstar celebrity. But the fact that she's also Mr. Sunday's younger sister? No, I doubt he'd wish harm on his own flesh and blood, no matter how grand the ambition. We can't believe that happened to Miss Robin. The strong defending the weak is a great mantra, but if I had to pay such a price, I... I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> I see. I am now aware of everyone's stances. Raising these questions merely serves to illustrate one point. The plight of Penacone cannot be salvaged by the harmony. The true foundation for a sweet dream paradise can only be established through the order where the strong govern the weak. I know the suffering of being tormented, the turmoil of losing your way, how sorrow and even despair set in when matters don't work out. All of this causes me unending pain, because this is not what happiness is at all. We must teach the weak how to live a happy life, and this life isn't some noble propriety that the upper crust preaches, but in definitive terms, a way of survival that belongs to everyone. So what is your definition of living a happy life? Huh. Good question. Human consciousness is fundamentally an illusion, a cage known as self-worth. People lured in by this illusion make mistakes, yet still ask that external influences bear the burden. When one mistake after the next permeates the masses, they become impossible to trace. Thus, the amassing of these individual cages culminate to form a prison. A place dictated only by the rule of survival of the fittest. Nature is always accompanied by predation and sacrifice. Its antithesis is known as order. That is what I want to do. Unite people's happiness under the banner of order. 
They won't need to make bitter choices any longer, nor face the weaknesses of humanity. They can cast aside their primal instincts to build a haven for mankind. <laughs> Simply describing thoughts is far too abstract, so allow me to provide a simple example. As you all may know, there are societal norms like weekends and long weekends that exist on some worlds. During these hard-earned rest days, people are given the chance to extricate themselves from the stresses of everyday life, allowing a certain tranquility to return to their souls. And it is only on these days that people do not have to adhere to the law where the strong prey on the weak. They can live out their lives happily during these brief intermissions. It's just a pity that two or three days are still too fleeting compared to the span of a lifetime. From where I stand, society's ideal system should be seven rest days. Following Sunday, there should ensue a second, a third, and indeed an infinite procession of Sundays. This should be the face of the new world. Idyllic, eternal, peaceful days. And thus, every person can return to their base selves in this utopia. Some gaze in reverence at the stars, pouring their whole beings into calculating the distance between us and the isolated world of Pagana. Meanwhile, some seek refuge in quiet corners, holding one another unencumbered by the chains of unwelcome obligations. There would be no need to bear the hardships of reality. Only in this way can humanity face the inevitable end with the purest of spirit. Living a life of dignity. This is what it is to live in bliss. Miss Firefly, you who are stricken with entropy loss syndrome, you of all would surely understand this. <laughs> it sounds like a flawless theory. <sighs> but what is the price to attain all this? The cost is minute, merely a personal and eternal sacrifice. If this paradise is to be maintained for everyone, someone must remain trapped in solitary wakening until the end of the cosmos. Wakening? Which means that this so-called paradise is still a dream. Stepping into this paradise means forsaking reality, correct? It is not forsaking, but transcending. Flesh, blood, sorrow, weakness. If the physical is the root of spiritual suffering, it is only logical that we defeat it. But in this supposed bliss, people won't have defeated their demons. The chance to overcome their tribulations would be forever lost to them. In other words, it is an escape. That's another way of understanding it. But there is no shame in escape. On the contrary, the seeds of escape exist in everyone's hearts. Don't you agree, Miss Firefly? And as to why we sleep, it is because we are afraid to awaken from our dreams. But this is not in conflict with the grand plan. Only in acknowledging this. Can we truly understand the frailty of human nature? And from there, show compassion and protection. I... I admit that you are a born leader. Your perspective on humanity brims with pessimism. Yet you express compassion for all. Even when your heart pities them. But unlike you, I live for the self. 
From my perspective, individuals making choices for themselves is their birthright. The want to escape may be innate in the weak. But whether they are weak or not, it is not up to another to decide. Perhaps in your mind, you also view me as weak? think so. Since Miss Firefly has said her piece, the Astral Express will also naturally give you our answer. We'll leave it to you. Just as Mr. McHale instructed before, tell him our choice. This place. Does this place ring any bells, Misha? I. I don't know. But I feel a sense of deja vu. What is this place? It's the realm within a dream bubble. This was left to the Astral Express by a nameless. But weirdly, when we entered it, it was completely empty. Dr. Edward from the Dreamscape sales store told me that. Dreams are formed from memories, and a dream bubble can't take shape if its core is empty. So I thought you might be able to help us in unraveling this mystery, Misha. As a hotel doorman, you know Panacone best among us. Hmm. I... I don't know much about dream bubbles, but if you want to figure out what this mansion is, I'll do my best. I'm counting on you then. Uh, Himeko, I still don't get it. Why were you so sure that Misha had a connection with this dream bubble? I wasn't sure. It was just a hunch. But since Misha feels familiar with this place, my hunch might be correct. Exactly. This is where you and Firefly encountered death, which we now know as dormancy. Considering its connection to Dreamflux Reef, it's not surprising it appeared here. The question now is, who brought you here? Based on the clues we have so far, it's unlikely to be that masked fool. So, identifying them is crucial to us. We're drawing closer to the truth once more. Let's give Misha some time, as I believe he'll unveil the secret of this dream bubble. All right, but there are doors all over the place. Which one should we choose? Do you have any idea, Misha? Hmm. I guess... Maybe this way? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but... Let's give it a try. Wait... You managed to choose the right door on- Weird. This place is quite different from the hotel. But I just- I feel like I've been here before and even lived here for a while. If I remember correctly, there should be a fireplace down that hallway. Clocky and I used to sit by the fire listening to the crackling of firewood. And... and the room on the other side was... the toy room. I loved spreading out all the toys from the box on the floor and... making up stories for each of them. Hold on. This doesn't make sense. Didn't I grow up in Dreamflux Reef? So... What is this place? This could be a case of amnesia. Don't worry, Misha. It's common for everyone to forget certain aspects of the past. Those memories haven't vanished. They're just lying in the depths of your mind. We can surely get them back. Since this place seems familiar to you, why don't we explore a few more rooms and see if you can recall anything more? Yeah, then... Let's check out the rooms I just mentioned. Hmm. 
Mikhail, that's the name. Now we all know him as the Watchmaker. So, who is he talking to? Do you know anything about it, Misha? I'm sorry. I don't know much about the Watchmaker. But, Mikhail... Anything special about that name? Mikhail... is... is Grandpa's name. Grandpa? Do you mean... you're the Watchmaker's grandson? But we haven't heard anything about the Watchmaker having descendants. And the name Mikhail is not rare. Perhaps it's merely a coincidence. Could you tell us more about your grandpa, Mikhail? Yeah, sure. He was a seafarer who fearlessly ventured into mysterious seas and storms. He was always on the sea and had lots of friends who accompanied him on his travels. He didn't want me to call him Grandpa because that would make him sound old. He believed he was still young. The name Mikhail was given to him by his parents, Mahaley and Elise, both renowned seafarers. Every time he came back, he'd share his logbook with me and tell me about his adventures at sea. <sighs> I want to become a great adventurer, just like him. It appears that the seafarer has nothing to do with the watchmaker. So, perhaps it's just a coincidence? So, where is your grandpa now? He went off on a new journey. And it's been quite a while since I last saw him. So, where has Clocky gone? Did he leave to protect Dreamville? Tick tock. Tick tock. I heard some noises from the room. Origami Bird? That's a friend of mine. You and Origami Bird are friends? Yeah. It's a member of the Compass Crew, uh, just like Clocky and Miss Mirror. And there's more than just one Origami Bird. They are a big family with lots of brothers and sisters who look the same. They follow Miss Mirror's orders and handle all sorts of jobs on the ship. They're the best sailors. Sailors? Can Origami Birds be sailors? Could you tell us more about the Compass, Misha? The Compass is a ship bound for the New World. Clarky and his partners travel through layers of fog to the depths of the sea. Whenever there is danger, Clarky will use a compass and guide the ship in the right direction. That's a great story. But in the Panacone cartoon, Clocky and his partners have always lived in Dreamville and never ventured out, right? Huh? Oh, that does seem to be the case. Weird. I... I clearly remember... Clocky arrived in the New World in the end. <laughs> Perhaps Clocky has a hidden past. I think... I hear the sound of water. You once mentioned there's a magnificent fountain up ahead. Look, there it is! The water resembles a precious jewel embedded in the dreams of all seafarers. Every time I gaze at the shimmering lights beneath the waves, it feels as though I'm back in this place, standing by your side. Have you recalled anything, Misha? Yeah. I saw these sentences in Grandpa's logbook. He used to say that despite the perils of the sea, whenever he stood on the deck in the afternoon, overlooking the sparkling waves, he would think of this fountain in front of his house. He often said that those moments felt like returning to his family's side, and the difficulties at sea didn't seem quite as challenging. Uh, you know, I quite understand such sentiments. Hey, don't tease! I was just being a bit sentimental! Perhaps every adventurer far from home carries a fountain within their soul. 
Even though the other side of the sea remains shrouded in the unknown, the fountain in front of his house serves as a compass, leading him back to his cherished ones. Yeah, while Grandpa was at home, we would stand by the fountain and place the compass, a toy boat that I made, into the pool. Back then, I would ask him when I could go on adventures like him, and he would always laugh and say I was still too young. Oh, it seems this Mikhail is truly a seafarer and has nothing to do with the watchmaker. Yeah, based on Misha's recollections, the scenes in the dream bubble appear to be his childhood memories. But this raises more questions. According to Misha, he was clearly born on an oceanic planet and led an ordinary life, with no connection to Peniconi at all. Could this be some sort of metaphor? Perhaps the sea refers to the memory zone. I'm sorry. I don't know, but my memories keep pouring out uncontrollably, like water flowing from a fountain. Perhaps I'll... I'll remember more things if we go further. We're going to the opposite side, right? No. We should turn left here. Uh-huh. Something feels... different about this place. This is it. I remember this corridor. Up ahead is... Grandpa's study. It was in that room that I... saw him the last time. The atmosphere in this room feels totally different! Misha! You finally come! Clocky! You're here! the room where we first met each other. Are those books on the bookshelf log books left behind by that seafarer? Yeah. Whenever he came back, he placed a log book on the bookshelf in his room. They contain records of his expeditions to every corner of the world. He described our world as a fountain. At some point, the sea started to gradually swallow up the land where people lived to ensure that everyone had land to settle on. He had to continue exploring the sea and search for the source of the rising seawater. On that day, he called me to his study, telling me that he was embarking on another journey. However, I could sense the gravity in his expression. It... It was the same look I had seen on my father's face before his final voyage. I asked him if I could go with him, but he said that my adventure lay elsewhere and told me to stay home and patiently await a certain sound at the door. What sound? He told me about a vast ocean in the sky. An ocean of stars. He spoke of a train that transports children with a desire to venture far away. Traversing the sea of stars without ever stopping. He said that he knew the crew on the train. And that he had asked them to take me along. He said the journey I had always dreamed of would start there. A train? Could it be? It's... it's the Astral Express. I... I remember now. Grandpa's friends are a group of nameless who came to this world to resolve a disaster caused by a star. Then, he gave his pocket watch to me. It was his cherished treasure appearing in every one of his adventure tales. He explained that difficult times were ahead, but assured me that the watch would guide me. He said, 
as long as I kept moving forward, I'd eventually reach my desired destination. And then, it was as if I heard the distant sound of a train whistle echoing throughout the room. Exactly, Misha! And then we followed that whistle, didn't we? Yeah. I think I can still find the way we took back then. This is the dream jigsaw, right? So we're supposed to find the exit. But where can we find the last piece? Do you remember? You said you obtained a mysterious shard when you stumbled into this place. Oh, hey, the shape seems to match. So, this shard is also connected to Misha? Looks like we're just one step from revealing the truth. Let's get to the other side and investigate. This is it. This is my room of clocks. While I spent my time waiting for Grandpa to return from his voyage, Walter gave me this workshop, and it became my secret base. Here, I learned how to repair clockwork and gears out of my fondness of precision mechanics. In my dreams, I was the captain of the compass. Embarking on adventures with my companions, Clocky and Miss Mirror, in search of the new world. I... I was born and raised here. So, this building in the dream bubble is your childhood home? Yes, but not exactly. To be more precise, this dream bubble itself is my home. You've remembered everything now. Wait, wait! Why does it feel like everyone else knows something I don't? Marge, do you remember when he mentioned a clocky that only he could see? Yeah, the little guy here, right? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef, right? And Mr. Yang even greeted him. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a childlike spirit! The answer lies in the Astral Express. His experience shows that neither Firefly nor Acheron can see this clocky. And when we were in Dreamflux Reef, you may have noticed that for some reason, nobody outside of the crew had ever talked with clocky. A mimetic life that can only be seen by a select few. It's just like a hidden message, left by someone for the nameless. But Misha can see Clocky too, right? They even grew up together. But Misha hasn't started the way of the trailblaze yet. That's the key to the mystery, March. Now take a moment to recall. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew interact with Misha? That's the answer, March 7th. This dream bubble is the place where I was born. And I... I'm a dweller in this dream. Just like a memory zone meme. I should have stayed here and waited for you. But when reality and memories merged, I unconsciously pushed open that door and left the bubble with Clocky. So it's not that the Watchmaker's dream bubble is empty, but rather, the stuff inside ran away? And the whistle you heard, was the sound of the Express arriving at Pentacony? That's one way to see it, but I believe there's a longer story behind all this. It's best for Misha himself to explain all the details. How about we start with your name? 
Now should we call you Misha, or...? Thank you all for helping me rediscover my true self. Now, please allow me to reintroduce myself. I was born on Lushaka, in the Presmere system. Adopted by seafarers Mikhail and Char. They gave me a treasure. A name that carried their hopes. Mikhail Char Legwork. Or simply, Misha. If you prefer, you can call me by a more familiar name. The Watchmaker. So, you're the Watchmaker himself? Unfortunately, that legendary figure is no more. I am only a reflection of his life. As for the child who has been with you, he's the innocent protagonist of Misha's childhood dream. A friend of Clocky. A young apprentice. And a future mechanic on the Express. And this also marks the beginning of his journey, devoted to the Trailblaze. At, At the, the end, end of the, the journey, journey, I, I left, left this, this little flame, flame which, which I so, so cherished, cherished, in, in my, my deepest, deepest dreams, hoping, hoping to, to pass, pass it on, on to the, the nameless of, of future, future generations. generations. However, he somehow left the dream bubble and forgot all about his task. I apologize for all the confusion this caused. <laughs> Because he was born with a desire to trailblaze, wasn't he? I don't think Misha has forgotten his role as a guide. He remembered it. And that's why he mistakenly appeared as a hotel doorman in his dream from the very beginning. The one who brought our unconscious friend here must have been Misha. If that's the case, we encountered the Watchmaker's legacy from the beginning, didn't we? Well... I have, I have a sarcastic, sarcastic friend, friend who says, says I always take big detours and end up back where I started. Perhaps that's, that's what, what every nameless has to go through. But in the end, end you found me. I'm, I'm sure you're all wondering what my legacy is. I believe my hound has mentioned the Stellaron and my wealth. If I may apologize, the Stellaron part is real. As for my wealth, however, it's nothing more than a baseless rumor. I left my homeland as a child and embarked on the journey of Trailblaze. I traveled to various planets until finally reaching Asdana, where my friends and I built the original Penacony and fought for its future ever since. I've been moving, moving forward, forward all my life, life doing, doing what, what I could to overcome the obstacles in my path. But ultimately, my journey reached its end, and I left behind no possessions worth entrusting. So, if you ask what's left within this worn-out train engine that can be called a legacy, I suppose, I suppose it's the, the things, things that are still burning in the engine's furnace. furnace. Now, now that you're well aware of the current, current situation of Penacony, I certainly hope that you'll help me get this world back on track. But I'll leave that decision to you. For the path of Trailblaze is never paved by others. All I have for you is a story and two gifts. I want to give you my pocket watch. It has accompanied me throughout my long journey, guiding that naive child forward, and has been blessed with the presence of so many great people up to this day. And my hat, too. The one who navigated for me placed it on my head and planted a fanciful thought in my mind. The trailblazing expedition will never end. Now, it's time, time for you, you to make your choice. choice. Once you've, you've made, made up, up your mind, mind open that, that door and, and enter the long dream of an old man. man.
I'll be waiting for you at the end of this corridor of time. All right, everyone. Let's make a decision. Although I don't think anyone will have any objections. Of course! We've come this far. Surely there's no other option than moving forward. In that case, it's unanimous. Then let's proceed together to the end of this dream and tell Mikhail our decision. Someone has to step up and save Lushaka. So why can't it be me, Misha? Please don't go. And if you must, please take me with you. Don't leave me alone. Even without me, you know how to proceed forward, brave Captain Misha. The compass is waiting for you. Now go, board that train and start your journey. Where are you going, Mikhail? I... I'm going to clean the floor in the parlor car. I've promised the conductor. Wait, first tell me. Did you fix this watch? Um, yeah. I know what it looked like before. Its chain was broken, the back case torn, and the marks on the dial all worn out. Well, uh, it's hard to explain, but I knew it could be fixed. It's the hands, Mr. Amundsen. Its hands were intact and pointing in the right direction, so I knew there would be a way to fix the rest. <laughs> I see. You'll work with me from now on. Haven't you always wanted to tinker with this train? You're its mechanic now. As for the conductor, I'll do the talking. But, but I only know how to fix watches. Don't worry. You've got what it takes. I'll teach you what you need to know. Where are you going, legwork? It's time to head to our next stop. <sighs> I... I'm staying in Astana with Rosalina and Tiernan. I see. This place reminds you of home. The people of Astana have only achieved a tiny victory and still have a long way to go towards true freedom. Hanunu needs us. Don't worry. Not all journeys lead to the stars. Even if I leave the Express, our path of trailblaze will continue. <sighs> yeah. I knew you wouldn't stay on the Express forever. Leave in peace, my friend. And, uh, take this with you. This is Mr. Amundsen's hat. Uh, but why? <sighs> when he departed, he said he would leave it to his best student. Well... Suppose the time has come. Farewell, legwork. Take care of Tiernan and Rosalina. And don't forget to write to us. Where are you going, watchmaker? Don't worry, Micah. Just going on a little trip. Someone has to be at the forefront of the interstellar frontier, and I'm the only former nameless in Panacone. So why can't it be me? Because you're all we have. Have you forgotten about Tiernan? The cosmos is way more dangerous now. What will happen to Penacone if we lose you too? But what will happen to Penacone if we don't find a way out? Ah, uh, Tiernan. How can I ever forget him? I've spent countless sleepless nights asking myself why I didn't go with him back then. We nameless won't stop. Don't worry, Micah. It's just a matter of getting back to my old profession. Just wait for me to come back. What if, and it's a big if, if I don't come back in one piece, then you'll become the next watchmaker. Where are you going, old man? Oh, you're here. Answer my question. What are you up to? Relax, Gallagher. I just came up with a great idea. Wanna hear it? Oh, come on! 
Aren't all your ideas just ways to get yourself killed? I may be blunt here, but you're the last remaining hero in Penacony. If you die too, the, the secret of the Stellaron will go to the grave with you. Yes, I'm afraid there's no way out in Penacony, so I'll have to consider alternatives beyond Asdama. We'll organize a festival using the Watchmaker's legacy as a facade and send invitations to the entire cosmos to gather people here. So... A desperate struggle against the family? Desperate? <laughs> Don't we have you here, my friend? This task is challenging, but what hasn't been challenging for us along the way? Well... Whatever you do, remember, make sure to send an invitation to the Astral Express. Misha! Where are you going? Oh, it's you, Clocky. Take me to Dreamflux Reef. Last night, I had a long dream about the day we met. I want to write down that dream. Write it down? Why? Oh, so I won't forget it. Do you remember how you got your name, Clocky? Of course! You told me that when you were a kid, you lived in a room full of clocks. Those wall clocks and pocket watches grew up with you and were your best friends. Yes, but what I didn't mention was there's a funny misunderstanding behind it. I was a kid, and there was always a special pocket watch in my memories. It was with my grandpa, guiding him on his sea voyages and leading the way in his every adventure story. I wanted to have a pocket watch like that, too. And that's when you appeared in my dreams. Yeah. Every night, we boarded the compass and set sail together. But you know what? It wasn't until the day my grandpa gave it to me that I realized... It wasn't a pocket watch at all. It was a compass. So, your name should have been Compassy. And the watchmaker is just a nameless. <sighs> We've arrived at Dream Flux Brief. So, where to next? You know, Clocky... I don't think I'll be going anywhere else. I've traveled far enough, and it's time for a little break. Oh. So, we'll set out again. When you're rested? <laughs> no. I'll stay here. And then... This is where it ends. This is... Where it ends? What do you mean, Misha? You told me that the trailblazing expedition would never end. Yeah, that's what I said. So now, it's up to you to decide your next destination. My next destination? What's that supposed to be? I've been following you! Misha? <laughs> you're acting weird today. <laughs> if you're feeling down, we can just do what we usually do. <laughs> With the clockwork. <laughs> no, I... I'm not feeling down. As for clockwork? Yeah. 
It resolves all problems in this dream. So... Do you know what clockwork actually is? Hmm... I'm... not quite sure. Well, everyone gets lost at times. They may hesitate and doubt which way to go. That happens in this dreamscape and beyond. But don't worry. Everyone goes through moments of uncertainty and hesitation. Eventually, they gather the courage to make bold decisions. Whether it's calming, joyful, angry, or, or sad, all they need is a little nudge to take that step toward where they truly belong. I'm leaving that little nudge with you, and I hope you'll share it with others. Such is the essence of clockwork, the will of the trailblaze. <laughs> Clocky's hands spin around non-stop, indicating confusion, frustration, and weakness. But ultimately, people still need to move forward. Just like, like your hands, hands. always oh, pointing ahead. This is where my journey ends. From now on, it is your path to walk. Trailblazing means taking paths your predecessors forswore, and venturing even further. The Pentaconi and Mikhail's dreams does not belong to order. a glance at Penaconi at a time like this. Is it because of the resonance from the legacy of the Trailblaze? Or perhaps the bond between you is so strong that it even impresses an Eon? Well, there might be another possibility. Perhaps they want to witness, on behalf of the fallen Eons, who will hold the future of Penaconi. If that's the case, on behalf of the Dream Master of Penaconi and the 107,336 members of the Oak family, I'm extending a formal invitation to all of you. I'm cordially inviting you all to the Penaconi Grand Theater to participate in the upcoming Charmony Festival. And, of course, you won't be in the audience, but on center stage. Since the future of the Stellaron Penaconi, and even the entire cosmos is at stake, let's draw a conclusion there, in all fairness. If you truly believe in Akavili's path, then show me their courage and determination. philosophy, and genuinely wants to prove that the Order is right. I sensed a strong conviction and a desire for dominance in him. Maybe he won't accept the outcome unless he wins fair and square. That's why he'll give it his all in the upcoming battle. Yeah, you're right. We've even dealt with a Lord Ravager of the Destruction, so a follower of the Order won't be a big deal. Anyway, we can't leave the Stellaron unchecked. 
This is about trailblazing a bright future for Penacone and fulfilling Mikhail's and his predecessors' long-cherished wishes. Now that we've taken up the mantle, we can't afford to fail them. However, the same applies to the Order. Their plan didn't materialize overnight. And they have the profound collective consciousness of the planet of festivities behind them. A desire to dream. To slumber and escape reality. All those hidden emotions have given birth to the sweet dream of the Order. They've harnessed the will of an entire planet to create an eon. This confrontation is far more complicated than a simple power struggle. To secure Penacone's future, fighting on the stage alone is not enough. What do you mean? Are you not coming with us? I believe Firefly is trying to say that she's heading off to another battle. slave told me that this journey would bring unforgettable rewards. Even though the script he gave me only had a few lines, I couldn't ignore them. Because one of the lines said, I'll experience death three times in the land of the dreams. Three times? This can't be serious, right? The first time was a painful death when I was stabbed by the Blade of Dormancy, which led to all subsequent events. The script will always come true, but in a way that will only be revealed when that page is turned. So now I've understood the meaning of my second death, and I am prepared to face it. If all goes well, my efforts will provide crucial support for you. Only by achieving victory in this battle can we secure a future for Penacone. And only then, my third and final death won't come true in the most terrible form. The most terrible form? Does that mean... The true death, where everyone in Penacone loses themselves completely in the eternal sweet dream of the Order. We must do everything we can to prevent that. Have you made up your mind, Firefly? Yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Thank you again for your assistance for the Astral Express. May we meet again, in reality. Yeah. Farewell, everyone. May your trailblazing expedition never end. Huh. I dreamed of a scorched earth. Everyone, are you ready? A new shoot <clears throat> sprouted from the earth. It bloomed in the morning sun and whispered to me. Like fireflies to a flame, my feet is dead. May we meet again in reality. After today, Chapella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not too distant future, you'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the dreams. Penacone. I hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers or salvation. <laughs> you mean my three deaths? Silverwolf told me about it. It's such a shame that it's not part of my script. To live. I'm never afraid of death. The opposite of death is eternal life, and that's 
That's something I'll never desire. People die. And I am no exception. Death is like a script. A fate that cannot be defied. But that's exactly why we have to choose where we want to rest forever. Do you exist just to perish? Are you not the same, Blade? The end you desire is not one dictated by others. If I were to die now, I would only be a weapon. I believe I should die as a human, though its definition escapes me, isn't it? This the answer that ordinary people look for their whole lives? A name that can be carved onto their tombstone. A tombstone that belongs to me once bore the inscription Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Then it changed to Stellaron Hunter. But one day it will bear the name Firefly. And all the brilliance she showed at the end of her life. That's quite unexpected, old man. Who would have thought your crazy plan would actually work? Do all you nameless fools just act on a whim? I can sense that this false sweet dream is coming to an end. The Nameless may be young, but they had the ability to achieve this goal. Just like you did in your time. It's a shame you won't be able to see it firsthand. <laughs> Maybe I won't either. Once something fictional is seen through, it ceases to exist. Yeah, not just those Nameless. Even Mr. Wings is just like you. Stubborn won't listen or give up, no matter what. Well, fate is unpredictable, I guess. If we weren't bound by those cursed paths, maybe we could have had some good talks. But in the end, we managed to do it. And now we can find solace. Remember how those idiots cursed us? Is it, go to hell, you worthless traitors? Well, I don't know if they really meant it, but... If longing for freedom means going to hell, then I'll be joining you soon, you fool. Let's get together and have supper again in hell. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. There's one more thing. Here's to you. A glass of hello and goodbye, trailblazer. To the imperfect tomorrow. It's warm here, isn't it? You're lucky to have found shelter from the rain, let alone fresh berries in this desolate place. <laughs> I was just following the scent of life. It's particularly strong in a place like this. It's a shame these berries don't have much flavor. Seriously? In case you didn't know, this fruit is pretty juicy. The only downside is that when you chew it, it becomes extremely spicy. <clears throat> have you lost your sense of taste? I can still taste certain things, like a faint sweetness. Before coming here, I stopped by a place called Orkron. It had barren cliffs and nights lit by bonfires. Burgundy snow would fall from the sky, and when it landed on my tongue, it tasted like raspberries. The flavor wasn't exactly sweet, but it left a lasting impression. When I think back on my past, I realize that What's tying everything together isn't the big events, but 
Rather, these small yet unforgettable moments. Don't worry about it. Losing oneself is a reality that every self annihilator must face. At least, I haven't completely lost my senses and memories yet. Well, congratulations on adding another footnote to your journey. By the way, are you always alone? No, I had a companion in Orkron. She's a short, nameless girl who aspired to explore IX. She always said she'd walk a path deeper and farther than Akavili's. <laughs> Quite an ambition for such a small girl. So, uh, what happened? She... became stagnant water. Well... My condolences. Condolences? I don't need them. The girl left with a smile. She never regretted her choice and most definitely wanted me to say goodbye with a smile. So, that's what I did. That's proof that you're grieving for her. Or, perhaps I'm just afraid. Afraid? I rarely sense that emotion from you. What do you fear? I'm afraid I'll forget the 30 days I spent with her. Just like all the other days in my life. Most of them have already washed away with the rain, disappearing into an unseen realm. I fear that those vivid red memories will fade away too. There isn't much color left. And besides this faint warm red, there's almost nothing. Hard to imagine. A ranger accustomed to bloodshed, destruction, and chaos finding warmth in the red color. Because I have experienced this warmth many times. Long ago, I promised someone that I'd bring it to more people. And that for every remaining moment of my life, I'd strive for a better ending for all. As long as this red color still lingers, I have a chance to fulfill that promise. It represents a burning fire, a blooming flower, the berries in this cave, and life itself, fleeting yet still dazzling. In the end, it will lead me beyond the horizon of existence. And on the other side, I will Cut off nihility. <laughs> the one blessed by the sleeping and shapeless is considering how to kill them. That's truly pure nihility. But you're right about one thing. After spending so much time near this stagnant water, only when I look at this vibrant red fire, do I realize that I'm still alive? When will this rain ever stop? Perhaps when the sorrows of the departed have finally quieted down, the sky will clear up. Have you heard of a planet named Biari Scamandros, Don Hung? It's one of the Paradise Kingdoms under the influence of the Harmony, a sought-after wonderland for the inhabitants of the Dardanu Major and Minor systems. Half an amber era ago, the family held an unprecedented festival there. And after that, everyone on the planet became part of the family. Do you think the same thing will happen on Penacony? Yes. Or how else can we explain it? The family deliberately used the watchmaker's invitation to keep all the path striders here, but banished the emanator of the nihility. Because of the nihility, I'm rarely affected by the power of other paths, but somehow I can unconsciously infiltrate them. Maybe that's the risk they're trying to avoid. I would disagree. 
Biaris Commandros is not part of the credit system or connected to the Silver Rail. It's nothing more than a remote civilization sheltered by the Harmony. But Panacone is different. If the family messes with Panacone, that would be like declaring war on almost half of the factions in the cosmos. They have no reason to do that. No, they don't. If they truly serve the Harmony, that is. What do you mean? The path in Panacone is impure. The Harmony here has impurities. Do you remember the ancient Swarm disaster? Tazerond, the propagation, brought endless havoc to the universe, and it eventually evolved into a fierce battle among all eons. Two paths lost their eons in that war, the propagation and the order. Coincidentally, their downfall is related to a certain eon. Shipe, the Harmony. Legend has it that they participated in the crusade against the Imperator Insectorum, and devoured Anna the Order for unknown reasons. Holy Forgaroni! So you're saying that the two leaderless paths are working behind the scenes? But I don't see any descendants of the propagation in Panacone. Could it be that the remnants of Beyond the Sky Choir are hiding within the family, trying to resurrect a fallen Eon? I can't say for sure, but they're definitely planning something for the Charmony Festival. Holy wubba boo, now, this is getting way too complicated. Is this why you want us to leave Asdana right away? Are you giving up? The Charmony Festival will start soon. There's one thing that... I need to confirm no matter what. A warp jump is the best way to do so. Mm. Time is running out. I have another plan. Hold on. Are you thinking of using the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath? Exactly. The assistance from the Lofu Cloud Knights would be enough. Think. It over carefully. You can only use that once in your lifetime. I have considered it thoroughly. My companions are. They're also once in a lifetime treasures. Are you the only one here, my child? The Nameless is quite the diplomat. Our secrets have spread like wildfire within the family. And IPC starships are gathering towards Astana. This is a crucial moment for us. So, where is the Chosen One who harmonizes the varied sounds? What do you mean, Master? I'm right here in front of you, aren't I? You know, she was supposed to be the star of the Charmony Festival in our plan. But the plan has changed. As her brother, I... I know she doesn't want to sing for the Order. So I'll take her place. Hmm. You've always been wise beyond your years. I'm sure you understand the consequences of your choice. If you consider this a betrayal, well, there can't be two suns in the sky. I'll step up and take down the other sun if necessary. Do you believe in karma? <laughs> if karma exists, then everyone has their own karma. You have yours, and I have mine. And my karma has nothing to do with you, Mr. Gopherwood. Hmm. All right. Since you're willing to sacrifice yourself for her, I'll grant your wish. Well, the compromise came sooner than expected. Why? 
You and your sister were born as twins of the Order. And one of you is destined to follow this path to the end. Is this part of your plan? Of course. You're still as clever as you were when you were a child. The opening is near. Go, my child. Seize the power of the harmony and reveal your karma. I have one final question, Master. Why did you choose to bring the Order to Penacony? Wouldn't it have been better to choose a desperate world instead of a city filled with hope and dreams? Why? It's for justice, my child. If we lose justice in our hearts, we'll make the same mistake as the Harmony did. So, it's not you who manipulates the dreamscape with the Stellaron, but... Well, that's where our conversation ends. Go ahead. The 107,336 souls of the Oak family have dreamed of this moment too many times. I shall ascend to the heavens, becoming the scorching sun, bathed in my light. My people shall flourish, while all evil shall be eradicated. This is the interior of the Penacony Grand Theater. Oh, it's quite exhilarating to be flushed into the air by Soul Glad. Why is the venue still closed when the Charmony Festival is about to start? And not only that, the entire theater is... eerily quiet. No audience, no staff, no one around. Even if we're late, a grand theater like this shouldn't be completely empty. Let's explore around. Be careful, everyone. Yet, there should be some staff around. Why is it so silent? Ah! Ah, yikes! They scared the life out of me! Ah, why are there so many puppets at the ticket office? Ah! Ah, stop it! Are these puppets part of the stage setup? Even so, it's so eerie that the entire front hall is empty. Something feels off. We're in the right place, right? There's no other grand theater in the dreamscape. So Sunday's messing with us? He said we'd have a final showdown on the stage, but why is there no one here? My apologies for the delay, March 7th. <sighs> you scared me! Where are you now? I'm waiting for you behind the curtain. Following the Asdana tradition, I invite you to enjoy a stage play in three acts before the festival begins. History is a mirror reflecting the universe's true essence. Let's use this opportunity to delve into the rich history of Penacony and the eons. Within it, naturally, the future takes shape. 
Let us commence with the dawning of the world. After the dusk wars, darkness veiled the sky, and chaos consumed the earth. Enna the Order emerged, destined to restore all existence. I'm with you. That marked the first day. Make a wish. They gathered nebulae and forged them into pinks, thus creating a grand lyre with black and white keys. Strike the white keys and the sun rose. Strike the black keys and the moon rose. And so, the cycle of day and night arose. That marked the second. The puppets are gathering around the frame. Are they expecting us to enter it? Where are we now? The atmosphere here looks similar to Sunday's inner world. Perhaps this so-called stage play is created with his abilities. This act is named Ode to Prisoner. Given the atmosphere here, I believe it's about Penicone's past. I thought things were finally looking up as I managed to dodge prison during my recent trailblazing ex- But now it looks like I'll be back behind bars again. I genuinely wish to avoid a violent clash with my esteemed guests from afar. Therefore, I've arranged three acts before the situation becomes irreparable. Where shall we start our narrative? Well, let's start with the time when Penicone was still a frontier prison. AE, a prisoner named Hanun ignited a struggle for liberty and emerged triumphant. IPC referred to it as the War of the Frontier, while the Asdanians dubbed it the War of Independence. legendary hero, but it must be acknowledged that while he bestowed freedom upon the prisoners, he didn't grant them true liberating the three nameless states on the planet, endeavoring to spread the tenets of trailblaze throughout the frontier prison. Alas, their efforts proved futile. Once again, as Donna was engulfed in war, this time the enemies originating from within. The prisoners remained prisoners for the rest of their lives, 
fighting for freedom rather than living for it. I hope you like this land of freedom on a scorched earth. As you can see, their sentences have long ended, and the IPC guards have long been expelled. Yet, these prisoners remain enslaved, not by external forces, but by the confines of their own minds. Freedom permeates every corner, except fragile souls. It gives solace only to those who believe in its existence. Prisoners, this is my home. Learn the essence of freedom, and teach your fellow prisoners to fight. Hey! Why don't we have to fight while enjoying the show? For I desire not only your enjoyment, but also your assistance in its complete. I weep for the departed. Dust spring. The two shall fall. Who's familiar? In the name of Landau, years of cold, pardon the will. We shall never fall! Still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering soul. Here, all yours. Look, listen, feel, kick! Did you come here existence as fleeting as the dawns do, destined for oblivion? You will know just the seal of ill fate descends. Familiar. Destiny again, ill tidings manifest beneath the silent waters. Lies an endless abyss! <laughs> In the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering souls. I weep for the departed. <laughs> Dust spring. It too shall fall. In the name of Landau. Years of cold, pardons the will. We shall never fall! Huh. Huh? Yeah! Consistence is fleeting as the dawn's dew, destined for oblivion. I hope your the die is cast. Waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering soul. What would you like to know? Again, the ill tidings manifest. <laughs> Memories are ever chip beneath the silent water. Lies an endless abyss. <laughs> my gratitude. You will know just... Looks like somebody... The seal of ill fate descends. Existence is fleeting as the dawn's dew, destined for oblivion. I weep for the departed. Dust spring. It too shall fall. No one can.
can restrain you anymore. You are free! Thus concludes the first act. Amidst a raging war, the frontier prison headed toward becoming Land of the Exiles. This must be how Panacone was constructed. With the aid of outsiders, the prisoners were finally liberated and established the Land of the Exiles. However, it appears that Sunday aims to convey the spiritual plight of the prisoners more than the physical aspects of imprisonment. Uh, this show is a bit too literary for my taste. But the battle part is quite easy to understand. Anyway, we've arrived at the exit. Let's go! These puppets... Where are they guiding us this time? They transmuted streams of stars into inked nibs, creating symbols to be pronounced and counted. They molded stardust into flowing rivers, assigning the righteous upstream and the unjust downstream. Thus, all things were marked, and the world learned to discern between good and evil. That marked the th oh, look! Another... Frame! Ode to Fool. This must be the second act. The surroundings are different from before. The stage decorations look a bit tidier now. Behold the ensuing tale, a struggle for power. Panacone witnessed the ascent of the seven major lineages. Tree, grass, flower, bird, beast, fruit, and insect. Peace never truly graced Land of the Exiles. The history in this era is rich and intricate, so please allow me to present it in allegorical form. Welcome to this mansion. Land of the Exiles was in disarray, besieged by both internal and external perils. Though the seven major lineages appeared united on the surface, each harbored their own ambitions, leading to ceaseless conflict. Accountant! We are the pillars of this mansion! The Black Plum family was the first to fall. They withered away in the White Desert event. Orchestrated by the Alfalfa family. Hey, my child, you did not serve the old master. The leader of the Alfalfa family sought to defect to the IPC, freedom. trading freedom for survival. However, his eldest son slew him in the name of righteousness and ascended as the new family head. Only when Gopher Wood led the family to Land of the Exiles and earned recognition from all five major lineages did Panacone earn its new name, the Land of the Dreams. Make a wish. I'm with you. A little something for everyone. Dear outsider, I beseech your aid in purging this mansion of the poison spread by the lurking instigators. Uh... You want us to help you? 
What do you need? I wish they could regain their reason and cast away the shackles of hypocrisy. This is the second act. Looks like it's about Penacone's journey to becoming the land of the dreams, during which the family plays a crucial role. But this new master seems like a bad guy to me, don't you think? Perhaps this is the truth Sunday is trying to express, if you read between the lines. The harmony changed Penacone just as the guards once did. Looks like we've gotta help those guys kneeling down over there calm down a bit, right? In the absence of my master, I am free. <sighs> but without their guidance, for whom shall I sing? I shall sing for my new master, just as their noble voice once resonated throughout the cosmos. Master! Oh, you will return in due course, and I shall stand vigilant, awaiting the reward for my loyalty. Master, now that you have gone, I shall wait no longer for my reward. I shall seize what is rightfully mine. Once, I stood as the most loyal guard among all the servants. Now, with my master banished, it's my right to assume control of his dominion. Master has long departed, but why do I still fear the remnants of his creation? Master is no longer here. I thought I'd be free, but I'm not. Now, without my master's command, I'll have to seek guidance from the blind. Master is no longer here. I must seek a new master and serve them faithfully. Either I shall be my own master, or I shall return to my former master. I shall not submit to a new master under any circumstances. Without a master, who can grant me true freedom? Thank you, dear outsiders. My servants have regained their sanity. Eat me, one and all. Your former master shall not return. It is through righteousness and unwavering support for one another that we shall attain True perfection! Cast aside the veils of hypocrisy and embrace one another! Get ready. Looks like another fight is about to begin. Rain. The two 
shall fall. Look, listen, feel, kick! Another existence is fleeting as the dawn's do, destined for oblivion. I hope you're prepared. Huh. Justice. In the name of Landau, years of cold, pardon the will. We shall never fall. Here, all yours. Look, listen, feel kick. Existence is fleeting as the dawn's do, destined for oblivion. The threads of destiny again, the ill timing manifest. I hope you're prepared. <laughs> Destiny's hand has truly come. Memories are ever beneath the silent waters. Slides an endless abyss! <laughs> In the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering souls. I weep for the departed. Dust rain. The two shall fall. This ends here. The die is cast. What would you the seal of ill fate descends? Alas. They remain but slaves till the very end, with the illusion of freedom. Thus concludes the second act. Amidst an illusory harmony, Land of the Exiles charted its course toward becoming the planet of festivities. This is how Peniconi fell under the family's control. Since the arrival of the Harmony, the Land of the Exiles has undergone dramatic changes, not all of which have proven beneficial. This guy really loves dramatic scenes. Bet he comes from a whole lineage of stage performers.
They used the planetary rings to establish the law, forging a code of conduct among the masses. A grand lyre with black and white keys served as an instrument, while symbols of articulation and numerical notation took the form of musical notes. The downward flowing river became a melody, and the canon of law dictated the form. Thus, this guy is really into these puppets. And the atmosphere here is completely different from the previous two scenes. This is the concluding act of this play. I have showcased the past and present of Panacone, hoping that my desire for change resonates within you. And now, I shall reveal its future to you. Without a king, who shall be? Responsibility for the people. If the people lack foresight, we will make choices on their behalf, and we, there, and stand we shall the support them, protecting them, and standing against the mighty. story ourselves, just like we did before. So, do you think their mind needs tinkering or something? We no longer have need for a king, for we have become... How did it go? change them? What does that mean? My apologies for my negligence. I forgot to inform you that the final part was scripted long ago. Let our previous king recount it to you. Now it is time for the final rite. Prepare for battle. Looks like we'll have to fight again. Descending from the infinite side of the Such an the seal of ill fate descends. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. In the name of Landau, years of cold, pardons the wind. We shall never fall! I be ten to your will. Look, listen, feel, kick! In the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering souls. I hope you're prepared. Looks like something! 
Did you come to systems as fleeting as the dawn's dew, destined for oblivion? You will know justice. Again, the ill tidings manifest. Listen, feel kick! Destiny's cold. The seal of ill fate descends. Beneath the silent waters lies an endless abyss. <laughs> Another jerk on the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering souls. I hope you're prepared. <laughs> Existence is fleeting as the dawn's dew, destined for oblivion. You will know just. In the name of Landau, years of cold, pardons the will. We shall never fall! I weep for the departed. Dust rains, it too shall fall. Again, the ill tidings manifest. Look, listen, feel, kick! In the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering souls. The threads of destiny hunt. The seal of ill fate descends. Existence is fleeting as the dawn's dew, destined for oblivion. What would you like again? The ill tidings manifest. Beneath the silent waters lies an endless abyss. <laughs> The threads of destiny aren't cheer. All yours. Again. I weep for the departed. Dust rains. The two shall fall. This is the final scene. It's much more straightforward. He wants to expel the harmony and establish an empire based on the order. Let's go. Once this stage play concludes, it'll be time for the main event, the Charmony Festival. Perfecting all things in the heavens and on earth. Then, they rested from the labors of creation. Yet, all beings cried out to Enna. 
Under the banner of the Order, you have defined all things in the cosmos. But this made us realize that we are but puppets in your hands. Thus, on that day, all beings united and cast the Eon into the abyss of oblivion. This grand theater looks totally different. Is this the power of the Order? Everyone, get ready. This could be a tough battle. Make a wish. I'm with you. A little something for everyone. That marked the seventh day. Cheers and chants reverberated in the news. That concludes everything related to the Order. What are your reflections on this, my dear guests? <laughs> Nevertheless, this is but a trivial blip in the annals of galactic history. What truly matters is the course this river shall take in the days to come. You've arrived at the perfect moment. The Charmony Festival is about to commence. And it would be a shame if you were absent for the Harmony's prologue. Allow me to extend my warmest welcome once more. Welcome to Penacone Theater, the very core of the Sweet Dream, the abode of the Stellaron, the grand stage of the Charmony Festival, and the very place where the future of Penacone shall be determined through conflict. Your unwavering faith in the Trailblaze is truly impressive. True goodness can only be achieved through faith. Allow me to point out that falling into a permanent slumber is not happiness, especially when those people are driven by someone else's will in their sleep. Do you still believe that the Order only seeks to control the universe as their puppet, Himeko? No matter how perfect your vision of paradise may be, a cage remains a cage. People will never achieve true happiness in a world like that. They would just be toys for the Eon. <sighs> it seems you have misunderstood my intentions. Allow me to clarify. My desire is not to resurrect a fallen Eon or become one myself. My sole objective is to create a paradise free from eons, where the Order ensures the dignity and happiness of all humanity. A paradise exclusive to us human beings. That's not the case. If people are to live with dignity, there must be nothing and no one above them. In your so-called paradise, you would be the one reigning supreme. <laughs> Looks like we won't be able to convince each other. Now that our conflict has been destined, let's unveil our paths and reveal to the universe the true path. However, before the prelude to the future begins, please take a moment to ponder the questions I've posed. Is darkness equal to daylight? Are sinners equal to the righteous? <laughs> If you are born weak, which god should you turn to for solace? The Eon with great life. Under the
I weep for the departed. Dust rains. It too shall fall. Is that all? In the name of Landau, years of cold, pardons the will. We shall never fall! Looks like somebody needs a doctor, huh? On the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering souls. What would you like? The seal of ill fate descends. as the dawns do, destined for oblivion. This ends here. The threads of destiny here, all yours. Another jerk system is fleeting as the dawns do, destined for oblivion. I hope you're prepared. Gratitude. Again. Again. Here, all yours. Again, the ill-tiny manifest. 
Beneath the silent waters lies an endless abyss. <laughs> Did you come here of you from the still waters of oblivion? I guide the wandering souls. Again? You will know justice. The die is cast. What would you like to know? Huh? Destiny's hand has truly blessed me. Another journey to distance as fleeting as the dawn's do, destined for oblivion. I weep for the departed. Dust rain. It too shall fall. <laughs> I hope you're prepared. It'll heal. In the name of Landau, years of cold hardens the will. We shall never fall. No justice. Existence is fleeting as the dawn's do, destined for oblivion.
weep for the departed. Dust spring. The two shall fall. You don't look so. Did you come here of your own vote? In the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering souls. my gratitude. In the name of Landau, years of cold, pardons the will. We shall never fall! The th here, all yours. at all. What would you like to know? <laughs> Memories are ever beneath the silent waters. Lies an endless abyss! <laughs> Another journey begins. Systems as fleeting as the dawn's do. Destined for a blip. This ends here. Destiny's hand has truly blessed me. Again. In the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering souls. I weep for the departed. The two shall fall. Here, all yours. <laughs> Memories are ever beneath the silent waters. Lies an endless abyss! <laughs> Hope you're prepared. <laughs> oh. 
What would you like to know? <laughs> Discord. Open the heart of 
Another journey from the still waters of oblivion I guide the wandering souls. Again, the ill tidings manifest. You will know justice. <laughs> Noisy. <laughs> Is that all? In the name of Landau, years of cold hardens the will. We shall never fall! <laughs> Is that all? The threads of the seal of ill fate descend beneath the silent waters. Lies an endless abyss. <laughs> I'm feeling like there's another world in front of my eyes. It's the power of tuning. Don't let the song distract you. At all. Prepared.
Radiant Spirit. Heed my word. Show no mercy! Chat with me, sleepyhead. That voice. Is that Black Swan? Hey, where are you going? Hey, we meet again, sleepyhead. What? What's Miss Black Swan doing here? Nothing, Miss March. I noticed he was awake and wanted to check to see how he was doing. Though the strike from the general was timely, its destruction was also immense. When emanators collide, ordinary people inevitably suffer. But, luckily for them, the dreamscape is my home turf. Thankfully, I managed to get everyone out before the harmonious choir collapsed. Oh, so that's what happened! Uh, thank you, Miss Black Swan! Don't mention it. After all, I wouldn't want to see such precious memories vanish. You're heading to see your friends, aren't you? Would it bother you if I walked with you for a short while? Of course not. But you're not planning on doing something like last time, are you? <laughs> Why would you think that? I've never harbored any ill intentions. Well, not when you are around, anyway. Himeko and Mr. Yang are probably still busy. Let's go look for Don Hung first! Look, he's still talking to that cowboy! You're awake. How do you feel? Well, fork me. You must be that Stellaron they were talking about. Uh, don't worry. He's been up and about for a while now. But hey, Don Hung, why don't you introduce this uh, cowboy to him first? Allow me to introduce him to you. This is Boot Hill, a galaxy ranger. During our pursuit of a certain person, we crossed paths and just so happened to uncover a shocking plot being concocted by Mr. Sunday, <sighs> which is why we sought you out, to help the Astral Express save the world together. No need for thanks. Now, the Galaxy Ranger's principle is correct every injustice one sees. That's how you lot in the Sienjo put it, right, Don Hung? Uh, more or less. Wait, hold on a sec. This is the first time I'm hearing about this certain person. Who are you chasing? And why would that lead you to the Express? <laughs> uh, good question. It's, uh... <clears throat> Who was it again? Uh, Don Hung, do you remember? No, that ain't it. I just can't seem to recall. <sighs> Weird. 
My neurochip hasn't registered any malfunctions. It... Hmm. Huh. I can't seem to remember either. Uh, what's going on? God, Vic. Forget about it. If it slipped all our minds, reckon that person was just a minor scoundrel. Unimportant. Ain't gonna stop us from piecing together the story anyhow. Yes. When the dust settles, I'll just think of a way to recall it in the memory zone. Everyone, let's hurry up and look for Miss Himiko, shall we? He's now a minor star on Panacone, and the entire hotel's concerned about his well-being. You're right. Let's head to the lobby then. You guys go. I'm an outsider, after all. I'd rather not disrupt a long-awaited reunion. Look, there was... <laughs> That's all right. In these times of conflict for the sake of utmost safety, it is only right that the Alliance steps forward to mediate on behalf of the Astral Express. We must not allow you to take unnecessary risks. Furthermore, despite the IPC's eagerness for success, it prioritizes peace above all. And the family, trapped though it may be, professes a desire for harmony. The Alliance has always won people over with reason. I firmly believe both parties can indeed put aside their differences and come to a peaceful agreement. The General possesses a deep understanding of the greater good. With the Sienjo Alliance mediating, peace for Pentacony is within reach. <laughs> you flatter me. But ultimately, it's been all down to the Express. Without your efforts, this sweet dream paradise would have been claimed by the last remnants of order before there was even a shot at peace. Well, would you look at that? Here comes the big hero. <laughs> Here's the galactic baseballer. The paragon of both heroism and humility. Are you okay? I heard you couldn't wake up. Are you feeling unwell? Uh, don't worry, Mr. Yang. There is nothing wrong with him. He practically burned through a lifetime's worth of jokes on the way here. What about you, Mr. Yang? I heard that even Miss Robin wasn't spared. And that guy locked you both up. <sighs> it's a long story. But at least Mr. Sunday took it easy on us. He used an ability called tuning to connect our consciousnesses with his. In other words, he imprisoned us within his consciousness. Thanks to General Jing Yuan's destruction of the Harmonious Choir, we were able to escape. Uh, he used that tuning on us too! Does that mean that we were almost imprisoned as well? I can confidently say now, he was truly after a fair fight with us. Had he wanted, he could have easily taken us down without so much as lifting a finger. Speaking of the Oak family head, where is he now? It's complicated, but in a nutshell, he's now the former Oak family head. The IPC has named him the key figure in the family's Pentacony split, citing a threat to cosmic peace. He must represent the family and answer for the unrest caused. His trial is set to take place at Pier Point. The family quickly labeled him and the remnants of the Order as enemies, declaring the turmoil an internal rebellion. This move effectively barred the IPC from intervening in family affairs on both moral and rational grounds. Everyone really has their own agenda, after all. Then, what's going to happen to Miss Robin? She and Sunday won't be able to deny their involvement in the Charmony Festival. They're siblings, after all. <sighs> Why the sigh, General? I can only say that this incident is an unexpected mess for the girl. The Alliance will try to persuade the family to consider this matter carefully during mediation. It's time, everyone. 
The IPC's key members and I have agreed to consult one another before the upcoming negotiation. Do any of you wish to sit in? Given the General's invitation and the matter's significance to the universe, the crew will naturally accept. However, if the IPC has any reservations... Why, of course you're welcome. They've mentioned that your team is a trusted ally of the IPC and Pentacoin, so there's no reason not to welcome you. Besides, if there can be reliable observers from the Astral Express present, discussions will go more smoothly. So, what do you all think? <laughs> well then, we shall oblige. I'm kind of allergic to those types of situations. I think I'll just head back to my room and start packing. Not to worry. Himiko and I won't take care of things. I'm afraid I'll also have to return to the Express first. The conductor is worried about us. It's best I go and explain the situation. Thank you. What about you, hmm? Will you join Welt and me? Or have you got other plans? <laughs> Great. Although I'm not too sure of the reason. The representatives from the IPC have insisted on his presence. Allow me to lead the way. Follow me, please. The negotiation will commence at the hotel lobby. Everyone, please, follow me. Mr. Aventurine and Miss Topaz are here, too. Oh, and who is that over there? The Intelligentsia Guild's Dr. Ratio. This assembly is quite something. It's been a while, my Astral Express friends. I would also extend my sincere thanks to you, General of the Lafu. The presence of everyone here assures that the talks will likely reach a conclusion that satisfies all sides. Oh. Looks like everyone has come with expectations. Care to share? Of course. Topaz, if you please. Sure, leave it to me. In summary, it's good news. After much deliberation from the Strategic Investment Department's Council, the absolute majority of members have agreed to the following resolutions. In light of long-term considerations for interastral peace, and by authority of Pierpoint HQ, the Strategic Investment Department, on behalf of the Interastral Peace Corporation, will permanently relinquish its claim on Peniconi sovereignty and offer unconditional support of the family's rebuilding efforts on Peniconi. Ah. Uh. <laughs> now that's something. All in the name of peace. That's our motto. Has the IPC finished sharing all its thoughts? Then it's our turn. The Guild, much like the Genius Society, has taken a keen interest in the recent calamity in Penicone. Ultimately, both parties have agreed to a comprehensive collaboration, offering technical support for the reconstruction of Penicone. The floor is yours for the finer points, Mr. Scrumum. Enlighten us, please. Organic life's unrelenting search to understand the realm of inner spirituality is something I both admire and envy. Inorganic life has no mechanism to evoke dreams. But when my mechanical impulses are activated, my inspiration circuits will start to operate, and I will enter a state defined as imagination. Every time within the realm of imagination, there emerges a fire from the shadows. It is warm, bright. I frequently ponder this flame might represent the essence of intelligence, a cluster of inspiration ignited by high temperatures. The future direction of the universe may well lie within it. Alas, they are nothing but projections of my thought system to me, desired but unattainable. But after learning of Peniconi's accomplishments, I have come to realize that the flame is not beyond my grasp. After deliberations with my partners, we have decided to defer the progress of the Simulated Universe project, and instead assist the Intelligentsia Guild 
as technological consultants in the research of the dreamscape and memory zone, so that these assets may be better used to serve humanity. Not only that, we've also established contact with the Garden of Recollection through the IPC, and they've pledged their support for our research endeavors. I'm truly happy for the Dream Chasers on Pentacon. The cosmos is brightest and, let's admit, dimmer intellects are now at their service. But... Uh, never mind. At the end of the day, this is a positive outcome. No wonder everyone insisted that he be there. It heartens me to learn that everyone is willing to put aside their differences for Penacone's plight. I trust that everyone will surely reach consensus in the upcoming negotiations. Looks like Penacone's future is decided. I'm wondering, is there anything else the crew is concerned about? Peace is our greatest wish. Beyond that, we desire nothing else. <laughs> well, that's good. Now that everyone's minds are at ease, I shall take my leave. You may now depart with peace of mind. The Alliance will deal with all subsequent procedures. If that's the case, it appears that we have nothing else to worry about on Penacony. Looks like it's time for us to embark on a new voyage. Sounds good to me. You two head back to the Express first. I'll pick up March and deal with the checkout procedure. Oh, also, Miss Black Swan, you have a matter to discuss with me, yes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nothing escapes your attention, Miss Navigator. You've been with us this whole time, huh? In any case, he and I will be waiting for you and March on the Express. Let's go. Our time on Penacone has come to a fruitful end. Penacone's journey ends here. <laughs> I guess it was pretty fruitful. I am truly happy for the Dream Chasers on Penacone. The cosmos is brightest and, let's admit, dimmer intellects are now at their service. This is all due to your heroic deeds in Penacone. Everyone's been moved by your integrity and selflessness. Well, it seems the dust has finally settled, no? Well done, friend. to decide our next stop? <laughs> How we doing this? But show of hands. Hold your horses, cowboy. It's for those to decide. <laughs> I'm just catching a lift. Don't sweat it. Allow me to explain. Mr. Boothill and Miss Black Swan submitted a request to temporarily travel with the Express for their own personal reasons. As you all may know, the Astral Express never declines any passenger whose heart yearns for the distant stars. Therefore, they will be traveling with us for a while until they reach their destinations. Whoa, the Express is going to be much livelier now. But, Miss Black Swan, you better not use your Memo Keeper abilities to pull any pranks. <laughs> Understood, Miss Marge. I promise you... You'll never see me in your room while you're taking a break. Uh, don't! You're freaking me out! All right, all right, now that everyone's met everyone, we can continue our navigation meeting. Firstly, Pom Pom wishes to thank everyone. If it weren't for you all unearthing the truth about Penacone, Pom Pom would have never known where Mikhail and the rest had gone. What they had to go through was regrettable, but I reckon they all fulfilled their wishes. And it was thanks to all of you! Thank you, everyone! Now then, we come to the crux of this navigation meeting. We must decide on the Express's next stop. Let me introduce our current options. The first choice is from Himiko, the oceanic planet of Lushaka, a planet composed entirely of water. 
Many aquatic races reside there. Of course, it's also the home planet of the venerable, nameless Mikhail. The second choice is the agate world Melustanin, suggested by Welt. It's famed as one of the initial sites of the Stellaron disaster, and the place where the beauty Idrilla ascended. Today, it's celebrated as a planet of undying allure. The third choice is Edo Star, a planet nestled within a vast ion storm region, currently under assault by the Antimatter Legion. However, the distress signals from there have recently ceased, prompting the IPC's wish for us to check in on the situation. The last choice, courtesy of Black Swan, is the glass belt Petravia, a massive belt of asteroids that was turned to glass by the Lord Ravager Zephyro. These days, it's apparently known to house one of the branches of the Morning Actors Troupe. Ooh, so many options. I'm seeing stars already. Next up, everyone will select the destination that they wish to visit. And then, we'll put it to a vote. Little Misha and Old Mikhail's homeland. Having been through so much in Penacony, as an aspiring nameless, I believe a visit to his homeworld is a must. Count me in. Still, I imagine that planet must have changed entirely after the Stellaron disaster. I've heard that its land masses no longer exist and the native population has completely changed. Hmm, I'm not against Miss Himeko's choice, but Edo Star sounds like it's in danger. As nameless, should we not extend a helping hand? March is right. Though the fact that the distress signals have ceased means we're probably too late. But I still think we should investigate the situation there. Three votes for Lushaka. Two for Edo. Looks like we have a winner! Next stop, Lushaka! The ocean- Then this navigation meeting is adjourned. I'll go check the warp jump coordinates. Everyone can catch up on some rest in the meantime. When it's time to make the jump, Pom Pom will make an announcement. Hmm, there's still some time before the jump. What should I do? <laughs> How about a chat? Over here. Huh. For some reason, I'm suddenly stricken by the feeling that we haven't crossed paths in quite some time. Hmm. Perhaps the joy of reuniting after a long time can also be considered just another part of the trailblaze. <laughs> Got it. This Astral Express sure is comfy. But I got one tiny problem with it. How come there ain't no potent drinks on this ride? I can live without malt juice. At least stock something else. Uh, like that white gem. Calm in his dirt and not too pricey. You can't use that 12 years of age rule against a mighty ranger like me. <laughs> All these years out in the wild and now I'm bunking in luxury. Gotta say, it's quite the treat. Please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. <laughs> What's with you and always copying the way I talk? <sighs> the last couple of trailblazing expeditions have been downright terrifying. It's about time we had some fun, cozy, and cute adventures for a change. Come on, start praying with me. Oh, please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. <laughs> You're fast becoming an excellent trailblazer. It's an honor to be able to watch you grow. Don't downplay your achievements. Everyone has witnessed your growth. I've known many warriors in my time, and only a few achieve the kind of growth you have. Back home where I'm from, you'd be rated at least an S tier. It's not been easy for you these past few days. You've earn some downtime. I'm looking forward to seeing how you'll perform on our next journey. 
Come to think of it, <laughs> this trip to Panacone was the first time we trailblazed together, wasn't it? <laughs> Don't worry. We'll have plenty of time to spend together on the express. So there'll definitely be more chances for adventures like this. Turn in early today. You've really been pushing yourself hard recently. If you don't take this chance to recharge, it could lead to long-term problems. It seems fine when you're young, but it's a different story as you age. Oh, you're here. Seeing your reflection among the stars in the porthole <laughs> really does seem somewhat surreal. How about it? This journey of beautiful dreams. Was it to your liking? I can feel your obvious excitement. That means your memories will also become even more beautiful. So, how about you hand that small parting gift back to me? I'm quite eager to have it back. Oh? Hmm. Never mind. I just stumbled upon a particularly fascinating spot in your memory. Before I explain, I would like to apologize to you. This farewell gift I gave you isn't really a compass from the memory zone, but merely an empty light cone. Remember when we entered the hotel in the dreamscape for the first time? And I procured a few trinkets from your companions. Their functions are similar. This way, I can always be attuned to your location, ready to assist immediately if you encounter any threats. But this is not its most intrinsic function. Light cones are slices of light used to encapsulate solidified phenomena. This empty light cone is the same. It can etch your memories in their most vivid form. And then, allow me to admire and manipulate them, turning them into unique mementos. All the world is born from the power of mind and soul, and that power is memory. To prevent ourselves from being forgotten by the world, we must make the world remember us, or use our memories to recreate it. Life, seemingly vast, offers but a scant collection of impactful memories. Some joyful, some sorrowful, some light, some heavy. But you are different. Memory is a reflection of the future. Within that reflection, I see your unparalleled worth. You have the power to craft memories that can captivate the world. Your memory can illuminate the universe's future path. And that memory will be as scintillating as the star clusters you see in this portal. Precisely. But do you know the deeper meaning behind it? The reason is simple. In this grandiose and ostentatious dream of the families, only you personally experienced the entire course. <laughs> Patience, my friend. I will reveal the answer to you, but that time is not now. Turn around and take a look at your friends. Every one of them is reveling at the arrival of their next destination all filled with hopes and expectations of their own present and future. Revealing everything at this moment would be a bit of a buzzkill, wouldn't it? I'm looking for an opportune time, a time when you're totally at ease. Perhaps when the night grows hazy and you're about to drift off would be the most opportune. How about one fine night? I will prepare the candles, aromatics, and even a cushy couch to create a cozy dreamland for you. And then, I will tell you the answer in the form of a little bedtime story to lull you to sleep. Ahem! Hi! Hello! Attention all passengers! The Express is about to make the jump! Please be seated and hold on! 
<laughs> it looks like we're finally about to set off. There are countless gleaming memories out there waiting for us. Why don't we just leave it at that for now? Ah, that's right. As a small token of compensation for playing that little trick on you with the empty light cone, I will gift you with some words. They hold great significance to me. Life is akin to a winding labyrinth where memories serve as our sole companions. <laughs> You'll remember these words dearly, won't you? In the year 2158 of the Amber Era, the first year of the new epoch, the universe resumed its intended trajectory. The kindling of conspiracy smoldered in Panacone, the land of the dreams. Failing to erupt into a blaze, it instead flickered briefly on Klopoth's anvil before vanishing in the blink of an eye. The dead and those fated to die remain in their eternal slumber, while the living find solace in deep sleep. All clamored in a cacophony of silence and then went about their own ways. The cosmos emanated a vitality characteristic of a new era all for the modest price of a brother and sister's mild grief. Babies are born as stars extinguish. The silver rail unfolds. The story of the Astral Express comes to a close, yet it also embarks anew. Time marches forward heralding the arrival of a new chapter in the history of trailblazing expeditions. Countless shooting stars streak the sky tonight. If you can pick the right one, it will carry your wish to thousands of distant worlds. You're feeling very relaxed now, aren't you? So, then, it's time to tell you a little bedtime story. Well, let's start with a conclusion. The crew was defeated in the battle against Sunday. Everyone in Panacone failed, and no one survived. But don't panic. The truth, as horrifying as it may be, is not yet irreversible. There's still a glimmer of hope, and that's why I'm here. Next, I'll use this empty light comb that carries all your memories to relive everything that happened before. And when this story reaches its end, I'm sure someone as clever as you will notice that. There's a major flaw in the story you have experienced. Yet, within that flaw lies a glimmer of hope. Are you ready for it? Do you remember everything? When the clock turned back, the Express started a warp jump, sending you to a strange dream. You were bewildered back then, and then a galaxy ranger named Acheron showed you a way out. When you arrived at the Reverie Hotel, you met the doorman Misha and had a conversation with a Venturine, an IPC representative. 
Thankfully, Acheron appeared again and helped you. After that, you saved Firefly and explored Panacone together. During the tour, you ran into Sparkle disguised as Sampo and accidentally entered a child's dream. There, I rescued both of you from death, but Firefly didn't return to reality. She realized the truth and tried to involve you in her plan, but that resulted in an accidental death. Even more unsettling, you soon encountered another murder. The two cases of death prompted you to investigate the truth behind the sweet dream. Despite your efforts to gather information about the two victims, you didn't make much progress. But you did learn about the Watchmaker from Gallagher. Meanwhile, Aventurine was secretly carrying out his scheme, in which you were one of the pawns. In the midst of a fierce battle, Acheron revealed her true identity as an emanator of the Nihility, and unsheathed her sword. That strike foiled Aventurine's plan, and opened a passage between the Sweet Dream and the original Memory Zone. Upon your arrival at Dreamflux Reef, you learned the truth that death was actually dormancy. As well as the truth about the dreamscape, the Stellaron, and the bellboy, Misha. You split up with Sunday and Robin, looking for a way to seal the Stellaron. However, it turned out that Sunday and the Dream Master had their own hidden agenda. And you had to engage in an ultimate duel on the stage of the Charmony Festival. Finally, the story reached its conclusion. You emerged victorious, with the Trailblaze triumphing over the Order, and Panacone embracing a bright and peaceful future. This marks the end of the thrilling journey in Panacone. I'm sure you've already noticed something unusual, haven't you? The major flaw, which contradicts all the known information, hides in this story. It is true that Gallagher is a history fictionologist, but he didn't lie in this matter. In addition, death and dormancy do arise from the same concept, don't they? This is not the fatal variable in your adventure. Take your time and think it through. Well, although the fake deaths of those two ladies don't align with our initial assumptions, this fact itself doesn't contradict the information we have so far. I'll go ahead and eliminate that incorrect answer for you. So, what is the fatal variable? Are you suggesting that the sleeping and shapeless never bestows its gaze upon anyone, and thus no one can truly possess the power of the nihility? That's a very astute guess. But unfortunately, Acheron did progress further down the path of the nihility. Her unwavering belief in liberating the world from the grasp of paths surpasses the capabilities of ordinary humans. I'll discard that incorrect answer for you. Take your time and think it through. What is the fatal variable? Sparkle. Yes, Sparkle. The most enigmatic and elusive character in the entire story. But, unfortunately, she was the first to uncover the truth, and she did purposefully attack you to create confusion. By the way, she left me a message to pass on to you. Always make sure... <laughs> Is that a clue, you may wonder? I'm not sure, although I'm pretty sure that the fatal variable has nothing to do with that masked fool. 
Little Misha. Or should I call him the Watchmaker? He's only a segment of memory in a dream bubble, but his ambition for the Trailblaze led him to leave the bubble and embark on a grand adventure in Penacony. Well, Misha is a rather special memory zone meme, and he was granted power by the Trailblaze. There's still one thing that he shouldn't be able to do. A life born in the memory zone could never manifest in reality. So, why did he appear in the Reverie Hotel in reality? The answer is simple. He is the one fatal variable that contradicts all our known information. This means that you, who wholeheartedly believe in this memory, are still trapped in the dreamscape at this very moment. Wake up, sleepyhead. Break free from this eternal dream and return to the real world. We'll find our answers there. The train is about to make the jump. Five, four, three, This way, darling. Not another one. Thank you so much, Black Swan. <laughs> Finally, I can breathe a sigh of relief. I understand you must be confused, and we'll do our best to shed light on the situation. However, before that, it's essential to know that this place is the rift between dream and reality. A place reserved only for those who have awakened from Enna's dream. Do you remember Sunday's ambitious plan? He intended to harness the power of the Stellaron, the collective will of over 100,000 Oak family members and the desires of everyone in Penacony to usurp the harmony and restore the order. Unfortunately, it didn't stop there. From the early days of our journey into Asdana, we were already affected by the Stellaron. That strange dreamscape where we met. Maybe it was a sign that your thoughts were beginning to drift away. I don't think the goal of the order was to put everyone into a deep sleep. Quite the contrary. They used the Stellaron to catalyze the leakage of Astana's Memoria into the material world, allowing the dreamscape to blend with reality. And that included a lot of Memoria from the Beyond the Sky Choir. As time came and went, the dreams eventually became indistinguishable from reality, and reality became an illusion. People think they are awake, but their spirits have long since stepped into the Temple of Order. This is what makes Anna's dream so powerful. In this paradise governed by the Order, everyone indulges in their delightful dreams and lives happily ever after. I believe what you experienced in the sweet dream, except for that flaw, was real. Only in this way could you reach the destination. Lifting the crisis in Penacomi and embarking on your next trailblazing expedition. If it wasn't for Acheron's plan, we might have been trapped in this dream forever. Fortunately, while the path of the Order governs all things, it can't affect the Nihility. I came to realize this when the Dream Master tried to expel me at any cost. This is also why you felt a sense of peculiarity when traveling with her. Well... I'm not as fortunate as she is. Even if I'm a memo keeper, I was still influenced by the power of the Order and fell into hallucinations. However, thanks to your memories, now we still have a chance to turn the tide. For mortals, even if they possess the great power of a path, they can't create a flawless world like gods do. 
That's why there was a flaw in your dream. In other words, once you have realized the world is not real, you'll have a chance to break free from the dream. The flaw in your dream lies within Misha, who could have never appeared in reality. When I turned the pages of your memories, I realized that I was in an illusion too. Now Sunday has usurped the power of the Harmonious Choir through the Charmony Festival. As Donna has thus fallen into Anna's dream, transforming everyone equally into the notes of the Eon. Failure doesn't mean weakness. Only the strong can gather the will to resist the Order and try to break free. We still have a chance, though. To make it happen. Please, Black Swan. Guide us to those with a strong will. All right. Please come with me. These people are... They're the ones who accept Enna's dream and indulge in their happy illusions. We have no means to wake them up now. Not even your clockwork will do the trick. However, there are still other things we can do. Let's keep going. Here we are. It's Robin. Finally, you've arrived. Let me introduce you to Robin. She woke up from Anna's dream by her own will, and it's this tough lady who led us here with her song. I woke up for the same reason as all of you. In the dream, I experienced something that could never occur in reality. Are we going to lock it up in a cage? I want to see it fly freely in the sky. Without us, this bird would be too fragile to survive on its own. Do you want it to die? No, but... <sighs> then let's take care of it together until it can return to the sky. Uh, uh huh? Birds have wings because they're meant to fly. Even if they may crash on the ground one day, they shouldn't be trapped in a cage. <laughs> Birds belong to the sky, so we should help them return there, right? The illusion was so impossibly blissful that I realized it was just a dream. And this is our final hope. Anna's dream is founded upon the Harmonious Choir. Namely, everyone shared wishes. It will only materialize once the aspirations of all beings in Penacony merge as one. At present, it has become impervious due to people's desire to remain slumbering within the dream. And in order to destroy it, everyone in Penacony want to wake up. Now comes the tricky part. How do we do it? Humans yearning for sweet illusions borders on obsession, leading them to subconsciously resist the harsh reality. Therefore, I carefully selected a moment where he was completely unguarded, guiding him to uncover the truth himself to make him regain his consciousness. However, to wake up everyone in Panacone and get them to share the same determination, that would be nearly impossible. Indeed. I'm afraid it's almost as difficult as resurrecting an Eon. But we can't just stay here and do nothing. This is a critical moment for the whole universe. Who cares about some dumb number? <laughs> Thanks to Black Swan. Mm hmm you're welcome. And thanks to the Memo Keepers in Penagoni, too. I believe your partners have also awakened from their dreams. This is the first step of our plan. With the assistance from the Garden of Recollection, 
those who possess a strong will, like you, will gradually awaken from the dream. These free wills are the discord that will sway Anna's dream. However, awakening a mere handful of individuals is insignificant compared to the vast number of people immersed in the dream. We must find other ways to awaken the free will of millions of people within a short period of time. If breaking through from the inside proves challenging, we can seek assistance from the outside. We've long been aware of a potential solution. Asdana is a galaxy known for its abundant memoria and the remarkable phenomenon known as Synesthesia Dreamscape. When people first enter this place, they often find themselves and others sharing a collective dream. At this very moment, there is only one dream encompassing the entire Asdana system. So, you mean, if we can attract a large number of outsiders to this system, their free will would intertwine with this dream and shake it to its core? However, those outsiders might also succumb to the dream and become the foundation of the Order instead. The real challenge is, how can we gather a huge number of people as determined as you within a short period of time? <sighs> Looks like the Jade Abacus of Allying Oath will be the only solution. No. No need for that. Keep your once in a lifetime treasure. We don't need to bother the Cien Alliance for such a tiny request. Y you want thousands of people with unwavering free will? <laughs> That's easy. Just leave it to us, Galaxy Rangers. You can gather Galaxy Rangers? <laughs> Outsiders may see Galaxy Rangers as elusive and disconnected individuals, and actually, they're right. And that's why we have a tacit understanding among us. Do you know what it is, Acheron? It's the relic I return to you. Exactly. Its owner must have told you that it's meaningless to anyone other than a Galaxy Ranger. And that it can only fulfill its purpose when returned to its rightful owner. Because it's a burial artifact. Worthy only of a hero who has served the Galaxy Rangers with honor. When its light illuminates the universe, it means the fall of a hero. And in the direction it falls, Countless meteors will streak across the sky. Those meteors are galaxy rangers, coming from all corners of the cosmos, driven by a shared purpose, without questioning the cause or counting the cost. Because we abide by a common principle. The shooting stars of the hunt only descend on the longest night. And with them comes the dawn. We've stayed silent for far too long. Now, it's time to remind all the cowards, oppressors, and villains of the universe of our presence. I'll be the one to ignite the first spark. Once the dreamscape is swayed, I'll complete the second step. I'll fine-tune the slumbering souls with the Song of the Harmony, interrupting them with the discord of Trailblaze, and guiding them towards reality. It's true that some people are born strong, and others are born weak. If the Trailblaze is the target of heroes, then the Harmony will guarantee that the strong help the weak. Only the people of Penacony themselves can be the saviors of their homeland. Their path of happiness should be forged by themselves. While I may not be a nameless, I'm willing to instill courage in all those who need it. This includes my brother as well. Anna's dream is too cruel for him and everyone else. Your plan sounds well conceived, but still, it appears somewhat idealistic and romantic. The flaws rooted in human nature can't be eradicated overnight. Do you believe these efforts alone are enough to convince everyone to choose the right path? I agree with you, Black Swan. That's why the most critical aspect of this plan is not to convince everyone to choose the right path, but to inspire them to save themselves. 
So, you're the key in the end, I assume? The Harmonious Choir possesses the power of an emanator. To overcome it, you'll need the same level of power. The final step in destroying the sweet dream will be my responsibility. That's a relief to hear. <sighs> now that our roles are assigned, let's get to our battlefield and pose a grand finale. May I have a moment alone with you? There's one more thing I need to explain to you. This grand festival is drawing to its close. This is the starting point for the ultimate stage of our journey. Just as it marked the beginning of all the stories in Panacone. I have faith in you. However, before we depart, there is one more thing I must tell you. There's something you should know. We were able to locate you within this boundless dream and find the key to breaking free from the dream, all because of one person's unwavering dedication. Firefly. She awakened from the dream ahead of others, discovered the Express amidst the stars, and brought us valuable information about the remnants of the Order. She may have been aided by the script, and it came at a cost. As you know, Firefly is a stowaway who entered the dreamscape in a different way from ours. Without the dream pool in the hotel or assistance from the family, she can only awaken from this dream in one way. A real death. We mustn't fail her determination. I'm not implying that we must win this fight no matter what, but our resolve should match that of that courageous lady. Are you ready? Very well. Now, please close your eyes. So it's you. Our time spent with one another is precious. Don't worry. If anything happens... Oh. How long has this rain been ongoing? If I remember correctly, it has lasted for decades. Or even centuries. The unwavering determination of the Hunt followers persists even in death. But thankfully, we've guided those lost souls to their lives beyond. They were heroes in their time. And they won't be reduced to puppets of the Nihility in their death. You see, the shadows on the sea have vanished. Do you remember? He once said that the sky would clear when the regrets of the departed had faded away. But it's still raining. I know. So, why is all this? Why did this rain choose me? Because someone's regrets haven't been fulfilled, perhaps. Mortals who walk the paths are like... Sailors on a vast ocean, leaving behind a trail that creates countless ripples of possibilities. These ripples last longer than the fleeting lifetime's peaks, and for some, their presence leaves such a strong mark that it's reflected in the waves, sin thirsters, the obsessions of the path striders. They emerge from the depths of Ix seeing themselves as masters of their own destiny, unknowingly repeating the actions of their past lives. They emerge from the nihility and head toward it, leading purposeless lives. However, these hollow phantoms, they have journeyed with me for such a long time. Oh. So this is how it ends. 
I'm already dead. Yes. Are you watching over me? This is my duty. As Acheron, the Watcher. I'm guarding the path to the Abyss of the Nihility. Guiding every soul reluctant to become one with it. Back to this side. But if this is what the departed ones expected, should you try to change it? I don't know. But someone once told me that when the inevitable moment came, he hoped that someone would stand at his grave and place a bouquet of flowers. Even if it doesn't make sense at all? Some tasks have to be done, even if they are pointless. I have experienced that much already. Please extend your hand and then close your eyes. I'll carry your wish with me and fulfill it. Only then will I be able to put an end to the final regret by the Dead Sea. Will I see them again? Yes, that is certain. Because it was you who told me about the Express, your two former companions. The expedition cut short by the swarm, your narrow escape from death, and your encounter with the Galaxy Rangers and Panacone, the hometown to which you could never return. Yeah, for countless times, I got rejected by the family and had to pass it by, but I knew that my companion was still there. Okay. Are you still there? Take my hand and come with me. We will leave this place. You'll embark on a long, long journey, shrouded in darkness. But fear not, as a touch of red will be awaiting you at the end of the path. That's the color of existence. Follow it, and it'll guide you and illuminate the way out. By doing so, you'll eventually reunite in the warmth of the sunlight. Thank you. May death be the end of your boundless dream. Guiding you back to the waking world. Welcome to the horizon of existence. This place is one of the thousands of manifestations belonging to the sleeping and shapeless. And it's also an exit out of the nihility for the awake ones. Let's bid our final farewells here. distinguish between reality and imagination. All right, Gray? Life is into a winding labyrinth where memories serve as our soul companions. May your schemes be forever concealed. Anna's dream is too cruel for him and everyone else. To the imperfect tomorrow. I still remember the question on the invitation letter. Why does life slumber? Why does life slumber? We don't know the answer yet, but we're about to awaken from this dream. Or perhaps such is the answer itself. Leave this place. Return to where you belong. And awaken Panacone from this dream. As I said, our plan is not about convincing everyone to choose the right path, but about inspiring them to save themselves. 
so. When will people actively save themselves? The answer is when they are in desperate situations, like a drowning individual in the deep sea. When one's body and mind bear immense pressure, agony, confusion, and despair will follow. I firmly believe that the fragility of humankind often freezes them in their tracks, but in truly desperate situations, they will strive to save themselves. And now, Panacone has enough heroes to lead them forward. It's through this inherent, self-centered instinct that people exert their utmost effort, even when they know their struggle is fruitless. As absurd as it may seem, it's their resistance. As for now, it is time to guide them, not as a savior, but as a nameless among those mortals. In this way, you will reunite in the warmth of the sunlight. The rain is intensifying. Before we part ways, Please allow me to ask a few final questions. So far, you have forged unbreakable bonds with numerous individuals and entities in the sweet dream. Might I ask if you fear severing these bonds with your own hands? If there is a vast, lifelike dreamland that is virtually indistinguishable from reality, a realm without death, where everyone can attain the happiness and fulfillment they deserve, living blissfully ever after. I would ask, would you wish to stay? Imagine if this splendid dream were fated to fall apart. Friends, family, strangers, followed by the gentle breeze, soaring birds, the stars, and ultimately yourself. Everyone and every face they remember. The joy and the heartaches, the vows sealed and those left hanging. All will inevitably march towards a predetermined ending. If you had grasped the journey's finale right, from its inception. I would ask, would you still embark on this journey? I'm glad. The answer itself doesn't matter. What matters is that you've made a decision. Listen, touch, and ponder. And therein lies the sensation. Cherish it because that's what makes us exist. Such is the only answer humans can offer when facing the nihility. If the nihility represents the primal fear of life, rendering any lofty convictions insignificant under their imposing shadow, then behind this shadow, there must exist the most fervent source of light in the world. Just as every life that edges closer to death fervently approaches the end of the nihility, we must pursue that primordial light. No, not a thing. You exist in the nihility. And you watch over others to depart it. Such a task is absurd and meaningless. Nevertheless, someone had to do it. As for the meaning you mentioned, even if it's a meaningless task, I've come this far, haven't I? Even if the future you forward may not even belong to you. It may not belong to me, but it definitely belongs to someone. Mm. But hardships you must have experience. In that case, Allow me to do something you must do. Please, do me your name. 
perhaps my existence will vanish in the next moment. Nobody will remember this conversation or your answer. But I believe that your name should be remembered and this universe will remember it as well. For me, some things are difficult to recall. Yet there are others that I find challenging to forget. Such is memory. A creation of the past that blossoms into significance in the distant future. I remember that marks the start of my journey. The origin of the vibrant red hue in my life. And the most fervent element amidst every tempest. That's my name. Ryder Ozen Mori. Nay. The golden dream is getting restless. In the coming long nights, I'm afraid you will face many setbacks and witness many tragedies. And in the end, you will only see in black. But please believe me, that in that monochrome world, there will be a glimpse of fleeting breath. And when you make a choice, it will appear once more. What you must do is ponder its significance, then return to the waking world. That's where we all find our answers. Conflict. 
this place. Noisy. Awaken from your dream. In the name of Landau, years of cold, hardens the wind. We shall never fall. Look, listen, feel, get! This ends here. <laughs> this will be noise. It's my turn. There's no time to hear. This thunder. This sword will be noise. For the radiant spirit. Heed my word. Show no mercy! The noise is fading! I'll take the lead. The show begins! Listen to our song! Everyone, awaken from your dream! You will know justice. The die is cast. Disorderly noise! Take the lead. Awaken from your dream. Noisy. Enjoy eternal peace. There's no time to lose. Conflict is pitiless. Is that all? Weakness is not to fall. Might be ten to your wounds. Huh? Disorderly noise. In the name of Landau, years of cold hardens the wind. We shall never fall. Is that all? Here, it's thunder! Oh! 
Time to lose. Here. It's thunder! Noisy! Time to <laughs> What's in your perspective? You have my gratitude.
Let's play our own melody. The show begins. No time to conflict. It's pitiful. <laughs> time for the radiant spirit. Heed my word. Show no mercy! Lordly noise! Is that all? I'll take the leap. Awaken from your dream! Let's play our own melody. The show begins! Here, this thunder sword noise. Witness the will of the weak. The dawn is cast. In the name of Landau, years of cold, hardens the will. We shall never fall. Everyone, keep up with listen to our song. There's no time to conflict. It's pitiless. Oh, noisy. The inevitable day has arrived. 
the embryo of philosophy will reshape for us all of reality! If your paradise can save more people, sever my path with your hands! <laughs> Time radiant spirit.
win. We shall never fall. my gratitude. Everyone, listen to our song. Take the awaken from your dreams! This ends here! <laughs> this. There's no time to hear! This thunder! Everyone, keep up with my tempo! Ha. Looks like suck! Look, listen, feel, hey! I hope you're prepared. Follow my charm. Conflict is pitiless. <laughs> Time radiant spirit. Heed my word. No, no mercy. Listen to our song. Let's play our own melody. The show begins. from our dreams. In the first year of the AE-2158, a fiery conspiracy erupted in the land of the dreams, but soon faded in chaos and destruction. Whispers carried the tale of those fateful 48 system hours, when a sun teetered on the precipice of collapse, a paradise stood on the brink of destruction, and a world was poised to surrender to its new master. Amidst it all, a body decayed. Vultures gathered, and a brother and sister were doomed for eternal separation. And so, an eon succumbed to slumber once more. Some celebrated this fall, while others mourned. Among the insignificant witnesses, mere specks in the vast tapestry of the universe. It was said that this time, the Eon met their demise with dignity. As the cosmos bathed in the radiance of a pure dawn, a tempestuous storm brewed on the horizon. The chant of everything for the Amber Lord grew ever louder. Yet, no matter how one contemplates it, time 
inexorably swings Klopat's colossal hammer in eternal cycles. The tale of the Astral Express reaches both its conclusion and a new beginning. Time marches forward, heralding the arrival of a new chapter in the history of trailblazing expeditions. Brother, do you think the stars will fade away? Where did that come all of a sudden? Because the constellation that looks like a bird, the torrent eagles, looks a bit dim lately. <laughs> it's the torment eagles. Don't worry, it's still there. It's just it's located in the inner ring of Penacony and can only be seen when spring and summer overlap. As for the question you asked, I think stars do die, just like people. But do you know, sister? No star actually belongs to the present. The light we see from them is from a long time ago. Even after the stars perish, their light will travel millions of light years, spanning countless years, to illuminate the night sky of another world. In our paradise, I believe there will be a star like that, shining with the same light. Its radiance will last forever, and its name will be happiness. No, not just one star. We should have two stars. Or maybe even more. Yeah, you're right. It's a deal! It's a deal, then. This is our promise. And nothing will sway our ideals. Yeah, you bet! Pleasure to hear your voice again. Congratulations. You've become the biggest winner of this festival. Are you calling just to poke fun at me? No. I'm just impressed. Not only did you venture alone into Penacony and discover the truth of Dreamflux Reef, but you also managed to escape with the help of that Knight of Beauty. Remember the recording you received from your Trailblaze friend? It's now the most valuable chip in this game. However, this came at a high cost. Losing a cornerstone is a hefty price to pay. Diamond just called a meeting to discuss what to do with you. 
Just as I expected. So is Diamond planning to demote me? Or kick me out of the Ten Stone Hearts? <laughs> Why don't you take a wild guess? Well, all right. Then I'll guess. He's going to promote me to P46? All right. What will you wager? Are we talking about a real bet here? <laughs> I don't want to wager anything just to escape your clutches. But if it's just a friendly bet, I'll put on the line what I did when we first met. I'll bet my life, ma'am. Interesting. But since it's Diamond's call, no one can predict the outcome. I'm on my way to Pentagoni. Once everyone is settled, we'll return to Pier Point for the final showdown. Sounds like I'll be out of the action for a while. Finally, a chance to kick back and relax? Yeah. Leave everything to me and Topaz, child. Thanks to you, as soon as the Jade Stone was delivered to the family's compound, we finished up our preparations. The seeds we planted have taken root. Soon. It'll be time to reap the rewards. Huh? Let's wrap it up for now. Looks like I've got a visitor here. Oh, so many surprises today. Didn't expect a galaxy ranger and wanted criminal to show up here. One who managed to take out two IPC members under the noses of our fleet. Do you understand what that means? Screw Wubba Boo! I just put him to sleep! Don't try to intimidate me with that nonsense. Besides, I've taken down more IPC lackeys than the residual value you squeezed. And I don't mind adding a few more zeros to my wanted poster. I have a question for you. Be honest, or I don't mind putting a bullet into your head. Tell me, where is Oswaldo Snyder? Thank you.